so i'm going to share a film this film uh, is very very dear to me this is a film i came across years ago which motivated me to buy a phone that shot good video which motivated me to uh, start shooting on uh, phones if i'm traveling i own gear right i own all the kind all kinds of cameras all kinds of lenses i own literally everything uh, but at the same time when i'm traveling and if i am doing travel films or if i am doing minimalistic films i still prefer shooting on the phone for one simple reason it is compact it is easy and it is hassle free so this link that i'm sharing here guys uh, take a look at it Uh, I'm just gonna test the link before I actually share it with you guys. So once you've seen the link, come back and say done that you're done. Just see it till the end. uh the link is in the live chat uh, don't worry yeah, it is in the live chat uh, karthik just go to the link uh, once you're done come back and say done and we will continue guy watch the whole film and the end is the real film. for a brand bentley is a very very big brand when bentley would agree that an iphone sh can shoot something like that it, then you can understand that there are possibilities to shoot very very high resolution content without actually burning your bank yep chetan it is actually hard to believe that it was shot on a phone but uh, fortunately i was there i was part of the bts team and it was an amazing amazing experience because when these guys were actually shooting i was looking at the face and i was like what the hell are you guys doing so uh, idea was that they would want they wanted to shoot something which was uh, easy to edit easy to shoot and what they did was they followed a process they followed the proper film making process to make this film uh, including every single step from pre production to post production they understood that a phone colors at that in point that point in time the phone colors were not that great so they converted everything to black and white that is the reason the film is black and white because sometimes you would end up getting very weird tones from your phone because of white balance because of everything uh, around so there were are ways to go about it and by uh, converting your film into a black and white film or a film noir is the best option to do it why because it is the easiest option to do it so when we talk about life cycle of a film every film has to go through different stages you just can't pick up your phone or just can't pick up your camera and go out and start shooting well you can but you will end up either with too much of footage or too much of unwanted footage or maybe literally nothing usable so you have to be very very sure about what you're shooting because believe me right now you uh, if anybody who's starting off you or you, are you still in college you're still in school you would be free and you would have a lot of time on your hands to experiment but there will come a time there will come a stage when that experimentation will go down and whatever time you spend in producing a film or producing photographs or anything will add to the cost of your lifestyle will add to the cost of your business will add to the cost of everything that you do so the first thing that you need to concentrate is the budget 
always always calculate budget even if you're doing a film on your own and the reason i say even if you're doing a film on your own you have to concentrate on budget is for one simple reason that when you do that film and when somebody likes that film and if that somebody says okay can you do a similar film for me you would know how much it costed you to do that film and you can budget and you can sell accordingly so it is very 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 important to understand budgets the second thing your pre production has to be rock solid you cannot skimp in pre production you cannot have bad pre production because pre production is kind of the pillar of the whole process the pillar of the whole film and you will end up losing time and and you will end up losing money and of course if you are collaborating let's say money is not a problem because you're collaborating you will end up losing credibility just because your pre production was weak your production has to be solid you have to be ready for anything and everything you have to be ready for contingencies you have to be ready for problems you have to be ready for issues every single thing has to be prepped for every single thing has to be taken care of you have to be ready for crisis crisis is for example i booked a location but the location is not ready uh i krishna yes i will be sharing the ppt so guys don't worry the whatsapp group is made for that we will also be sharing the video uh, of the presentation uh, the people who attend these workshops get the videos as well don't worry so coming back to what uh, i was saying that you will get uh, you will have to manage crisis as well uh, you will be in situations where uh, something goes wrong your actor backs out the location backs out you have to make contingencies you have to make backup plans you have to make backup budgets for example if you have booked something or somebody for two days budget for three days don't budget only for two days because if you budget for two days only and something goes wrong and you have to add a third day that third day will go out of your pocket maybe you're renting some equipment maybe you have actors who are coming and you're paying them all of these additional cost component need to be taken care of and need to be buffered so that in case of contingencies in case of crisis you can take care of them you need to be ready for post production you can't be shooting 4k if your systems can't handle 4k there are ways to do it which i'm going to be talking about today but we have to consider the fact if the film needs to be delivered in one day you can't be shooting very high resolutions if you don't have the system power so you need to understand what your post production capabilities are and in terms of color also what you can actually manage in post production don't shoot a log color profile uh, just because you you can shoot it using filmic pro on your phone if you can't process it later you need to know what you can process and what you can't you need to consider distribution if you're doing independent cinema if you're doing independent films maybe documentary travel anything you need to start making money out of it you need for it to work as your portfolio or as something that will generate money for you later so distribution is is very very important going into detail how do you determine budget what are the costs that you need to take care of when you're determining budget the first cost is your pre production cost this includes meetings if you look on the side i've written meetings as a separate cost head as well this includes meeting this includes uh, meetings with clients this includes meetings with crew this includes any any kind of meeting that you guys have that you guys will be doing will be taking care of uh, maybe it is a meeting that you missed uh, or your client did not show up for or something went wrong the costs of that meeting also need to be taken care of and they need to be considered otherwise what you will end up doing is you will end up paying everything out of your pocket and you will not be able to recover money you need to understand what kind of equipment you guys are shooting on if you need to rent out something maybe you need a gimbal for a particular shot maybe you need a slider for a particular shot you will need to consider all of these right in advance when you even before writing you have to understand whether you have the budget to actually hire any of that equipment or you can actually outsource any of those things costing is very important people are important when you get into films most of you guys if you're shooting on the phone will do a solo film but let's say you do a short film 
let's say you get into collaborations you need to understand crew costs traveling from shoot to home and from home to shoot is a cost eating the catering of the crew is a cost regardless if you're eating at a, a street food corner or if you're eating in a restaurant you need to consider that cost locations are a cost cost is definitely a cost people will not work with you for free they need at least conveyance they need at least food they need logistics so they need the money otherwise they will not come back production costs when i talk about production costs this is costs that go into the shoot of the film maybe you are hiring a dop maybe you are hiring uh, lenses maybe you are hiring uh, location so all those costs that add to your production costs go into production costs post production costs consider the fact that if your film has dialogue and you were not able to record dialogue on location you will have to do dubbing so that cost has to be taken care of otherwise you will end up paying that cost out of your pocket so post production cost is not only the editing cost it is also sound design it is also audio it is also color grading it is also rendering anything and everything that add costs to your main core film is a cost there is an incident that i remember that when we were shooting a film uh the makeup one of the guys it was a, it was a short film that i was shooting the makeup of one of my actors got ruined during the shoot in uh, editing we found out that the makeup the it, it was a uh, shot in which he was beaten up so the prosthetic makeup was very much visible that it is makeup i actually had to go to somebody who would do vfx to cure that in post that added cost to my production so there have to be costs that you need to consider whatever you don't spend is profit but whatever you end up spending could be a loss as well so be very very careful about it props and costumes you have to look uh, ask usually your actors also to do uh, own, uh, do the costumes but in case they don't you have to be ready to get them t-shirts get them shirts get them anything that would add value to your film what if a scene reads uh, needs a red t-shirt and your actor does not have a red t-shirt what will you do then so don't just guess your actors would have those props your actors would have those costumes just get prepped for it makeup and styling films look good or people look good on films only because of makeup otherwise you can't take close ups you can't take extreme close ups because you will be telling the audience about the deformities you will be telling the audience about what mistakes you've made in that film with that actor so you need makeup and you need styling you need to have your logistics right you need to know who what and where is coming from and guys this is important why because when you're hiring crew and when you're hiring uh, equipment and when you're hiring actors you need to understand how far they are away from your shoot because you will have to manage their transport you will have to manage their time you will have to manage everything from them getting ready to come to the set shooting and going back there have been instances when all my cast and crew was from gurgaon but one actor was actually coming from ghaziabad the transport of that actor the time spent for him to come and go back the amount of money we spent on him was actually much more than what i had actually spent on all the other actors combined so these kind of mistakes have to be considered right in the beginning don't make them you will end up losing money distribution is a very very big cost no film even if it is made on a zero budget no film will reach its height or will reach its peak without actually spending any money on it without actually spending any uh, money on its promotions even if you release it on youtube you need x amount of money to get views you for example i'm talking about genuine views by guys i'm not talking about uh, dummy views or uh, bots i'm talking about genuine views you run google ads that is how you make your video go viral uh, any music video that t series releases they spend approximately 50000 rupees on the first promotion on google to get the first few lakh views that is how they do it and those are the algorithms that those guys are working on youtube does not give you instant views for one simple reason it needs to make money and hence ads come into action so youtube charges you 
you go to film festivals you do the circuit for one whole year you need approximately 1.3 lakh rupees to get enter every single paid festival across the globe so you need money for festivals you want to do a cinema release or you want to do an ott platform release ott platforms like amazon prime and um, netflix allow you to release films for free they charge you a very minimalistic processing fee but if you want to stay on their front page if you want to come on the banners if you want to become a recommended film you need to pay money everything needs money cinema releases need minimum of 3 crore rupees to distribute and be released in cinema so cinema also needs money there is no such thing as free guys so consider everything as a cost uh any questions on this guys you can put your questions in chat uh, i will finish each section and ask you questions and move ahead any questions till now siddhant uh, what are you talking about are you talking about ott platforms or are you talking about distributors guys if you don't have questions just say no i will move ahead okay ott platforms uh, there are uh, vendors that deal with ott platforms there are agents that deal with ott platforms you have to look for them the best way to go about it is go to google say uh, release film on netflix say release on uh, say release film on search for release film on amazon prime you will get a list of uh, uh, agents and you will get a list of agencies who are providing services in which they take your films to these ott platforms they uh, charge you a minimal fee uh, that is a processing fee but that's pretty much it or otherwise you can write to netflix and amazon prime they will send you a form back they have a couple of requisites that you need to fill a couple of uh, uh, copyrights and uh, no copyright uh, ip claims that you need to fill and then submit your film and they will release it uh ott platforms you make money per view so every time you get a view you, you make maybe uh, depending on what your deal is with the ott platform and how good your film is uh, ranging from 20 paisa per view to approximately 40 paisa per per view which is literally peanuts compared to what you do hence ott platforms allow you to publish for free for, for one simple reason because they know that you will have to spend money on promoting that film and getting views so now the sport in your production is to know your audience you have to understand the first thing what platform uh i will vijay i will come back to your question we are talking about this later so i'm going ahead guys uh, i hope uh, okay guys ask questions related to the section i'm talking about if you have questions technical questions wait for it i might cover if i don't we'll do a q and a in the end don't worry okay the first and the most important thing in pre production is to understand your audience for that the first thing you need to do is to understand the platform you will be releasing your film on whether you're doing it on youtube whether you are doing it on an ott platform you are releasing it privately or you are releasing it cinematically you have to understand where your audience exists if i am doing okay and if i am doing a film which is an independent film i know it can't go into pure cinema i might release it on youtube because i have a following on youtube but i need to make money so i might release it on an ott platform as well ott platforms also release independent cinema and short films which are between 20 minutes to 40 minutes of time so when you are doing films you have to first understand where you are releasing and where depends on where your audience is so if you're making a horror film you have to be sure that your audience exists at the platform where you are putting your film because if you take a horror film show it to somebody who likes comedy they won't like it you take a comedy film show it to somebody who likes documentaries they won't like it if you take a documentary film show it to somebody who likes action they won't like it you have to be sure where your audience exists you have to be sure where your audience is coming from and where you will get the most views once you know what the genre is let's say i select action as my genre now i need to understand what my audience who likes action what are their preferences when i talk about preferences i talk about how long a film would they watch how much of action do they like do they like the depth of action in the sense of like blood 
flowing do they like uh, uh, prehistoric action do they like uh, modern age action i need to understand all these layers and all these components when i am deciding on the preferences of my audience now once i've understood what my preferences of the audience are i need to fix a view duration this is very very important because if you fix your view duration you will be able to understand how much you really have to shoot for a 1 minute film you need at least at least 1 hour of real time footage if you're shooting without a script but if you're shooting with a script you can actually do it in less than 45 minutes but the average what the industry says is you need an hour of footage for at least 1 minute of film so imagine you are doing a 90 minute feature film that is 90 hours of production needed at a bare minimum and when i say 90 hours that is 90 hours of roll time that i'm talking about and people do that because there are retakes there are uh, short changes there are multiple angles you will be shooting one scene again and again you do patchwork everything included will take your time will take time away from you and will add to your production costs because when you decide the duration of your film you will understand how many days of shoot you need and how many hours of actual roll time would you need to produce that kind of content or that kind of film so view duration is very very important when you starting off do not uh disregard it for one simple reason when you writing a script you need to understand how much you will write to come to that end duration you need to understand the characteristics of your audience when i talk about characteristics like i had mentioned before you need to understand what they like and what they don't like because that will lead to the success of your film you need to understand the place where the uh, film is being aired the place where the film is being screened whether that place is something that is preferred by that audience you have to consider or consider all these factors when you're deciding on the kind of audience because that will decide what kind of film you're making if your audience does not like documentaries you will look for and you are making a documentary you will change your audience and you will look for an audience that is documentary friendly so it work backwards also let's say i've decided to make a documentary film now i look flat which is perfect for documentaries maybe i go on youtube maybe i take it to film festivals so there are so many options available to me but i have to decide what option i am making it for let's say for example if i am making it for youtube i will not keep my film long because attention spans on youtubes are very less but if i on the other side if i'm doing film festivals i can have a long film because in a festival there is a very selected audience there is a very uh, selected niche that will come and watch your film and they will watch the film till the end they will not skip so you need to understand all of that you once you've understood what you need once you've understood what kind of audience you're making your content for once you've understood all of that you will have to decide on your message you will have to clarify your message you will have to see what are you actually showcasing to your audience so that they like it you have to decide on the plot you have to have to have to do research i'm going to be talking about research in the next slide but research is very critical you have to look for complications be a critic for your concept or go to somebody who criticizes every decision you make okay they might be a bad influence but 10 things if they say at least one would make sense and if that one makes sense fix it when i talk about complications in film you have to look for complications in story you have to look for complications in shoot you have to look for complications in uh, execution and editing you have to look for complications in the characters and you have to look for complications in the process if you don't understand these complications you will not be able to execute a perfect script for example if i am showcasing somebody from the 1930s but i have latest cars available to me i can't show that story i can't shoot that story it's a period piece period piece needs to be showcased in a way where you are showcasing the reality based on the script 
So you have to be very careful about the complication that might come into script. And the best way to do it is once you're done writing or once you're done researching, once you have a concept ready, go pitch that concept to somebody. Go show that concept to somebody, talk about it, do an NDA before you guys, this is very critical, do an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. This is a legal term. If you, anybody wants, I will share an NDA format with you guys uh, on the group. Do a non-disclosure agreement before sharing any content, even with us. If you're doing, uh, uh, you're sharing content for a pitch, you do it, do it with us. We will actually look at it and we will give feedback. Everybody can give feedback. So look for people who can give feedback, who can tell you the complications in your film, because when you are writing, you could miss out on something. Look for similar concept, look for similar success stories. Look for, look for what other people have done. Don't copy, never, ever, ever copy, but you get inspiration. Siddhant, I will take a look at it in case I've missed answering your email. Just, uh, okay, guys, uh, here is a uh, very, very, uh, interesting factor that I'm going to give you today. People attending this workshop have the opportunity to pitch one concept to us, which has to be one day of shoot, one location, one character, one to two characters. I will repeat myself. You have the opportunity to pitch a concept to us, which is one day of shoot, one location, one to two characters. These three uh, these three parameters, if you keep in mind and you pitch a story, if we like it, we will produce it for you. Cool. That's an opportunity for you guys. And plus uh, the inner circle guys get to pitch n number of projects. And if we like any of them, we collaborate for sure. Then we come to research. Research is very, very important. You need to understand what you are getting into. You need to understand what is the concept that you are making? What is uh, the concept that you're working on? Whether that concept will work or not. Look for similar content that this is why I'm continuing from here to here is look for similar content for one simple reason, draw inspiration. Okay. Question to everybody here. Where do you go to watch content? What is the biggest platform that you use to consume a lot of content when you are developing scripts? YouTube, Google and YouTube. Okay. YouTube, YouTube and Amazon, Amazon OTT platforms, YouTube, OTT platform again, Netflix. Guys, come on. I need answers from everybody. I want to see if somebody has the similar answer to what I'm going to tell you. I got one similar answer. Oh, somebody goes to Wikipedia as well. Amazing. YouTube, Google, Instagram. Cool. Okay. Uh, Lakshay had uh, pointed out a place which is called Vimeo. V-I-M-E-O. We I M E O Vimeo Vimeo.com is a platform like YouTube, except it does not carry ads and it has very exclusive content. I'm going to show you what Vimeo is and how do you utilize Vimeo for research? Because I utilize Vimeo to the full extent that I develop concepts based on Vimeo. This is Vimeo right now. This is Vimeo.com. When you come here, the first thing you see is plans join for free. So you feel that it is a paid platform. Guys, it is not a paid platform. It is paid only if you want to upload your content. What you have is the inspiration box over here that allows you to watch different content. And if I go to the inspiration box and I click watch, I come to a page which has a huge range of content. You have staff picks. These are curated videos. These are curated films that the Vimeo staff has picked out for you. These are award winning films. You have films, the films based on current issues like black lives matter is something that is running very, 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 very hard right now. You have a separate section that talks about films on the current issues. When uh, COVID had started, there were films on COVID. Black artistry in film. So uh, because there is so much of content on the web that is happening around uh, black people. So they are showcasing that LGBT similar thing. 
then you have category based content you have uh, premieres you have content based in place when they say place that is location you have short films this is let's say for example small business shorts small business shorts are basically short short films that talk about businesses and uh, content you have branded videos you have award winning films if you see over here these uh, small small marks on the uh, corner that i'm showing on the screen these are the uh, marks of people winning awards in film festivals those are called called the olive uh, leaves that people get you have animations you have documents so you have different genres and content coming from different genres to you which has either won awards or has been curated so that you guys can watch it this is the website you want to go to when you are developing fiction content or even non fiction content and guys don't hesitate to look at existing work because existing work will actually drive you to create something on your own will actually uh, drive you to create new concepts and will also give you an idea of what not to do which is very very important so you don't copy you draw inspirations when i say draw inspiration is you look at a film see what they've done see whether that fits into your budget whether that fits into your plot whether that fits into you what you are do, doing see that see all of that develop your content around it get inspired talk to people if you go to vimeo and if you go to the details that every film has in vimeo if you go to details that every film has in the caption section of the uh films you might even get in touch with those uh filmmakers with the uh, with either the actors or the creators the producers the directors you can approach them they're very 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 approachable they will answer your questions maybe you want to know what equipment they shot on maybe you want to know how they uh, manage location maybe you want to ma uh, work with them approach them i actually collaborated with a filmmaker from germany for a film we edited uh, back here in india that was shot completely completely on an iphone now i will see if i can get that link from somewhere i don't think they've uploaded it but that was last year and i actually got in touch with them through vimeo i liked the behind the scenes of a film that they did uh, i asked them if they finished edit they said they're struggling with the edit because the uh, editing is very expensive in germany they actually outsourced the whole edit to us here in india and we were able to deliver it and we got paid it wasn't for free they at least paid us our costs so this is the kind of uh, collaborations also you can work with is that people have already done there is already a case study which will tell you okay this is a success why do you want to make the mistakes that other people have made in their past make your own mistakes start making your new mistakes and don't repeat the mistakes of the other people who have made it in the past that is why i keep telling people and there is a series that i've launched on instagram called learn from my mistakes those are the production mistakes or pre production mistakes or post production mistakes that i have done over the 12 years of my career and that is what i'm talking about to people even today the examples that i'm giving are from my experience and that is what you need to learn from so you go to websites like vimeo you go to websites like youtube of course youtube is a very very big resource but there is so much content on youtube that it is not curated and you will end up looking at things that you don't even want to look at film freeway is a website that distributes film i will talk about it more in later that distributes film for film festivals it also has a lot of film content where and lot of access to filmmakers where you can go and approach them for collaboration or even to understand how they did their film go to google go to youtube search for weekly shorts right search for weekly shorts this will give you films short films that are uploaded bi weekly or weekly and are deleted later so guys you have to be very quick to watch them and they are amazing the award winning films and they're amazing so look uh, short of the week and weekly shorts are two platforms that you need to be looking for any questions till now guys any questions if you have questions raise your hand or put it in the chat box cool so once you have researched once you know what you're going to be writing once you know uh, 
Okay, Krishna, if I upload, this is a very cool question. Krishna is asking if I upload on Vimeo, does it pay? No, it doesn't. It even charges you to upload. Oh, YouTube is the only platform which runs ads and it pays you for the ads. That's it. So monetization is meant on ads. Vimeo is a platform which you will use to upload your work, your portfolio so that you can show it to people without them getting hassled with ads. So Vimeo doesn't pay, only YouTube pays. Coming to scripts, coming to writing. Now writing is important. You need to, you've researched enough, you now understand what your plot line is, you now understand what your concept is, you now understand what you're doing, you need to start writing. You need to start analyzing what you are doing, you need to start analyzing where you're coming from. Uh, any website to search on filmmaking? Yeah, Vimeo is your website. Vimeo has tutorials as, as well, guys. By the way, Vimeo has a lot of tutorials. Can we upload same videos on both platforms, YouTube and Vimeo? Yes, I do that. You can definitely do There is no copyright infringement in that. Any other questions about the previous things or otherwise I'll move into writing. Okay, if you have, we will hold on to them and we will talk about them later. When I come to writing, when I know what I'm writing about, when I know what I'm doing, the first thing that I do is a one liner. A one liner is also called a log line. A one liner is also your hook line. A one liner is your elevator pitch. Okay. How many of the people over here? There are approximately 40 participants. If I exclude the two of the members uh, of my team, 37 people in the workshop today. How many of you would like to pitch a film to us? Okay. Now here's a tip tip coming from what I'm talking about in writing. When you've pitched the film to me for the first time, you will have only 30 seconds to grab my attention, right? Only 30 seconds to grab my attention because if you don't grab my attention in the first 30 seconds, you will lose my attention and I will not listen to you any further. And I might miss out the most important thing, which is the concept. So your 30 second pitch has to be bang on. Here is a question to everybody sitting here. If I ask you, what do you do in one line? You have to answer. What do you do? Will you just put the chat box. And I, I don't want answers like I'm a filmmaker. Or I'm a photographer. I'm asking you, what do you do? Guys, come on answer one line. You have 30 seconds. There is somebody Jatin saying he's creating beauty. Okay. Service in a private company. Okay. Uh, my question again is if I ask you, what do you do? And if you have to answer it in one line, how will you answer? Can a guy explore and observe? Interesting. Krishna is a student of life. Amazing. I will rephrase my question. I stop. I will rephrase my question. If you are meeting me for business and ask, I ask you this question, what do you do? How will you answer in one line? <laughs> Siddhant impress me. Perfect. So if you're meeting, uh, okay, I'm an actor. I would ask you, okay, what kind of acting you do? I show reality in camera. Amazing. I will ask you how you do it. Uh, Jaspreet is saying I, I, he does life of a camera uh, will interest me might not interest me I would think okay maybe he's a technical guy learn to do mistakes and then again learn uh, as a client I will not like to hear what mistakes is Santosh lives li uh, live life okay uh, awesome <laughs> somebody's composing music I would have a better answer for that but yes amazing Okay, guys, I'll give you my pitch line. If ever I meet somebody for the first time and they ask me, uh, 
what i do my answer to them is one second there is somebody at the door yeah so my answer to them is i open i and this is somebody who's got a business this is somebody who is giving business to me it could be anybody so i do i open your business to the world this is my answer to them i open your business to the world if you are a student and come to me i have an answer that i open the world for you so the second question that i get right after this statement is how right the second question i get is how this is where your audience is now stuck with you because they will have to listen to you they will have to listen to you what you have to say next if you say something like okay i'm a filmmaker i do films i can do corporate films maybe after the first time maybe he's not interested in filmmaking right maybe he's not interested in uh, getting his thoughts uh, done into film what do you do next right so you need to have a hook which makes him make the person standing make him or her the person standing in front of you ask you how you do it once they do that once they have the second question of how you do it then you can go into details they will not stop you that is the best way to do it get them to ask you what you do they will not stop you because if you start if you start ranting about what you do you will end up getting them bored and they might stop you right there and say okay fine let's go ahead or let's talk about something else and you would have never ever even delivered the content that you wanted to deliver so have a hook have a catch have something that increases the questions in the mind of your viewer increases the inquisitiveness in the mind of the viewers a viewer now wants to know what do you do then you do is a one pager this is a synopsis one pager is usually 180 words in a page uh, as a synopsis uh, as a basically a summary of your plot a summary of what you going to shoot that is presented to me one tip and one thing you need to consider that one pagers will not carry your climax but they will carry the crux of your content they will carry the crux of your concept they will not carry the climax you will not reveal the climax of your film your one is the person reading your one pager is interested will ask you to send a full fledged story which is a five pager don't put it more than five pager because five pager is actually approximately a 10 minute read and nobody nobody in this world will give you more than 10 minutes so you guys have to be very very careful about how you actually send a pitch so when you guys are pitching to us the first thing you do is send me a one liner if i am interested if i get interested in what you were talking about i will ask for one pager because that is the time i will be able to give you i will be able to give you only 2 to 3 minutes as a read right if i like the one pager i will ask you for a story which comes in a five pager once your five pager is ready okay five pager will carry climax five pager will carry details of characters five pager will carry locations five pager will tell me everything and anything about the script except for dialogues there will be no dialogues in a five pager five pager has to be like a children's story book in which you tell me the details of the story but do not want me to interpret what it is now once you're done with your five pager once you're done with uh, writing a five pager you move to a script a script is where you start writing dialogues i'm going to show this what you see on the right is a sample of a script a script is where you write characters you write dialogues you mention location you describe your scene the scene description has to come in the script right so once you're done with your five pager you convert it into a script now you start adding dialogues and scene descriptions there is a particular format that you follow guys there are softwares i'm putting in the chat box there is a software called celtex 
or Caltex, whatever you call it. And there is a software called Studio Binder. Why I am asking you to use these softwares or why I am actually telling you to use these softwares is these softwares are pretty much automated. They pretty much do everything for you. You don't have to worry about putting a slog line. You don't have to worry about putting character marks on your uh, characters. You don't have to worry about a lot of things. Celtex will do it for you and it will manage everything for you or studio binder will do it for you and it makes a writer's life just easier to execute a script without knowing the technicalities of the script. I'm just uh, loading uh, cell text till the time I will go ahead. Uh, there is a difference between writing script and writing a screenplay. Screenplay also carries the movement the placement of characters, the mood, and of course, camera movements comes in the screenplay. Like the name says, how is it going to be played on the screen? That is what you have to write. You have to explain the scene to me. You have to explain how your scene is going to flow. For example, if I describe a scene, the scene is a man is walking on the road wearing a trench coat and it is raining. Right? That is my scene. That is the scene description. Then I have a dialogue, the man A dialogue. Camera comes to an over the shoulder shot of man A and dialogue. So now I have camera movement coming in, uh, coming in my screenplay. I have movement across location in my screenplay. Screenplays have to be very, very in depth. The screenplay has to carry all the elements of anything and everything that you are going to put into your film, that you are going to put into your script. The script has to be broke, uh, like expanded into a screenplay and you have to describe every single scene, you have to describe every single shot, you have to describe every single dialogue and you have to describe the movement of every single person. I'm going to show you a sample of what a screenplay really looks like. Just give me one second. Okay, you, uh, Celtex and Studio Binder, both of them give you some things for free and for some things you have to pay. So uh, to guys to just start off, if you want to start practicing, take up the free version, start writing. So now this is the interface of Celtex. This is what Celtex is all about. Now what Celtex gives me as a thing is when I hit anything, when I hit here, if I right after this, it will look here over here on top, on the left, top left. Can you guys see on the top left? Uh, can you guys see my mouse moving on the screen? Okay. If you see here, let's say if I, I am here, this drop down here is actually all the things that are part of a screenplay or a script. You have an act, you have a scene heading, you have action, you have character, this is where your characters come in. Dialogues, where you write the dialogues. Parenthetical is something which will talk about what is the setup, what is the setting. Transition is of course, like it says, how you're going to transition from one scene to another. Short, you will have to describe the shot over here. And of course, text if you want to add any kind of notes. Now, if I come here, this is a scene heading. This is talking about what the scene is about. If I press enter, it will come to action automatically. If you look at the tab again, it changed to action. If I press enter again, it will ask me whether I'm doing a scene heading. I press tab, it will go into character. This will tell me, okay, this is a character. I press enter again, I have to write the dialogue. I press enter again, I go to short. Now I am describing the shot. So when I do all of this, what is happening is it is automatically adding things to my catalog. It is automatically adding to my index cards and my breakdown. So everything is being done automatically. I don't have to actually stress out about doing these things manually. Cinema has been doing these things manually. Everybody has been doing, doing these things manually for years. But now you have these softwares like Celtex and Studio Binder that do this 
everything for you automatically and they also give you dummy screenplays and dummy scripts to practice on and guys believe me this will change your life in script writing and they have a free version which allows you to write the full script for free so guys start that off and don't hesitate to use it uh, don't depend on your knowledge alone of writing scripts because if you make mistakes what these softwares really do are they help me in a breakdown if i go and click on breakdown if you can see on screen it is processing right what it is doing is is automatically now broken down my scenes it has defined who my characters are it has defined what my different things my characters what their names are if there are location if there uh, if i had marked location it would also talk about location it is telling me look at the bre uh, breakdown menu on the right it is telling me what where and how what is needed in terms of characters if i don't want to if i want more than just characters i can actually go for more things as characters in this script we have not mentioned anything otherwise what it will do is i'll show you what a script breakdown looks like this is what a script breakdown looks like so this is a script when you write a script you write everything you you write elements you have to highlight and tag your elements you have to highlight like if it's a cast member you highlight them as cast members this is studio binder by the way on the screen if you guys looking at it one second i'm just moving some screens around the too many things opened on my system yeah so if you're looking at the screen right now this is studio binder for you when you write your script when you're doing different things in your script you can actually uh, select what you want to do and you can actually uh, create components of your script separately so once you've written you can just highlight the component right click on it and automatically you can give it a name or give it a category once you've given it a name and a category this is where the game changes and the software what it automatically does is it automatically uh, does a breakdown for you where it breaks down your scenes now this is a breakdown summary it is telling me that at what scene is this script on how many pages are in there in that scene who are the characters in that cast members in that scene who are the extras in that scene what props are being used if i'm recording on location sound what kind of sound do i need or what kind of background score do i need everything this software does for you automatically there was a time there was a time in when i started when we had to these manual job of an assistant director to do every single thing manually so guys use celtex use studio binder to start writing scripts they have tutorials they have everything you have to be sure what you're doing and you get into details never skip details of script never ever ever get into a shoot without a shot division a shot division is a list of shots that you will need to complete your film that is a list of shots that you will need to finish the film with the best story and keep all the interests of story with you you need to have a short division do not shoot films without a short division i made a mistake some years ago uh, with a film called narayan it's a cinematic release it was released in cinema um i actually delayed the film by a month uh, starting shooting the film by a month because they didn't have pre production they didn't have short list they didn't they didn't even have a proper script my director would come on the set every uh, shoot day and he would tell us what to do we didn't know what needed to be done so uh, being production i was carrying all my crew i was carrying all my uh, equipment everything putting in them in the car driving two hours away to the location just to find out that they needed only one cameraman and one act, uh, one uh, dop you will end up making mistakes you will end up doing things that will actually hinder your uh, filmmaking experience end up make uh, wasting time and end up wasting money the worst experience from that film was that i had a 30 day contract at 108th day 
I asked my director that I can't carry on. And when I asked my director this, you know what my director comes back to me and says is, Shitesh, you're not putting in your full passion and you're not doing it out of passion. That is why you were not able to understand the film. And I was looking at his face and I was like, what the hell are you saying? So it was a very one-sided film. And that is the mistake that people make. If you get into film or if you get into shoot without a short division, you will end up losing time. Now people ask me, okay, what if we're doing a travel film or if, what if we're doing a documentary and we don't have a short list? Well, you would ideally have a list of shots that you need to create that film. People who attended our free uh, Ford workshop have already seen this. This is for people who have not. Uh, and uh, once you're done watching this film, come back, then we'll talk about production. But before that, any questions? Yes, uh, Mehran, I'm going to be talking about travel filmmaking after you guys see this film. And you would have seen this film uh, before this uh, also. But any questions related to pre-production till now? Because we finished pre-production. We've pretty much done with pre-production. Guys, don't hesitate to ask questions. There is no such thing as stupid questions. Just ask. Maybe... Uh, if you don't want to display your name, ask it uh, in a private thing. Uh, Karthik, just give me a minute. Let me finish with the questions if there are. Where can we get short stories from? There is a, if you go to Google, just search for short stories. There is a huge bank of short stories. Search for short stories on Instagram. You will get pages that write short stories. There are uh, people I know who have been writing short stories as Instagram captions. Develop those stories. They are beautiful short films. Get uh, storybooks that talk about short stories. Take comic books that talk about short stories. Uh, script writing course is not necessary, but uh, like we have a short workshop that we do on Celtex and Studio Binder in which we tell you how to use those softwares that is necessary because you need to understand how the softwares work. Uh, okay, this is a very good question. Omkar is asking, making a short division is the job of direction team or cinematography team. Making a short division is the job of everybody who will be part of your film, be it producer, be it a director, be it a cinematographer. They have to be part of it because they need to understand what is going to happen when. Uh, Siddhant, I didn't get your question. Can you use their usernames or usernames of what? Just please, I will touch upon our ad filmmaking. I'm going to show you an ad later and I'm going to touch upon that. Uh, but using a phone for ad films, tough job because ad films are, usually require very high budgets. So I look for pages for short stories and I will do that. Uh, Siddhant, talk to them. Ask them. Uh, uh, talk to them if you can use their uh, stories as short films. They will not say no. 90% of them will love to collaborate. What is the format of screenplay uh, and script writing? This is a, a basic format. What you see on screen of a screenplay and a script. Uh, the software that is used is Celtex CELTX or Studio Binder. Both the softwares are amazing. Uh, I'm going to write it again. CELTX and uh, Studio Binder. I like Studio Binder a lot because their blog is also very amazing. Okay, cool. I'm going to put this link for you guys. What are the different types of shots? Uh, we're going to come to that Prince. Don't worry. Uh, Siddham, was you share the Instagram accounts of people you know who register? I will, Archit, I will do that. Don't worry. This is the link. Kindly uh, have a watch. This, this was shot on an iPhone 6 uh, as my first travel film. And uh, I got a lot of business posts. So I'm going to talk about that. Once you're done, just ping.
once everybody is done i'll tell you the whole case study uh, about this don't worry Okay, cool. Since everybody is done, um, I'll tell you it's, there is a very. Uh, I will come to everything. Kanika, just wait. It's a very interesting story behind how uh, this film com came into action. This was actually my first travel film. Uh, I made this film on a holiday trip to Malaysia, and uh, how it came into existence was or uh, Osmo Mobile was launched in two thousand and sixteen, and I wanted it. i wasn't getting it in india so the only option i had was uh, i would get it in uh, uh, in uh, malaysia and at a very very good rate i was i was there for a holiday i had gone there for a holiday and i decided to test out my osmo mobile there uh, i had an iphone 6 the iphone 6 shot full hd at 60 fps uh, i as a filmmaker i knew what settings i need i knew what uh, shots i need what is composition how does my camera flow so all these things i already knew so uh, uh, it's okay arjun uh, welcome to the uh, workshop we will i will share the recordings so that uh, you can view it later so when i when i was there in malaysia uh, i was already on an itinerary i was going to different places so when we talk about travel films you have an itinerary that you follow that is your short division because the location that you're going to places that you're going to will tell you what kind of shots or what kind of things can be shot on those places in those areas and how you can use the best of what your capabilities are to shoot that so you need to consider all of, all of that and what you need to consider i will talk about uh, as well uh i think uh i shot using uh, the phone uh, and i sh uh, started shooting using gimbal then i realized that the drone shots would look very beautiful and add value to my film the first thing that i did uh, can you guys hear me clearly am i clear or am i cracking okay must be the mic anyways so the first thing that i did was i went on youtube searched for a uh, malaysia drone and i looked for somebody who would actually have good drone footage or who would be able to shoot drone because malaysia had drone restrictions and i needed a license to shoot in uh, malaysia i i had a drone but i didn't take it with me on the trip because i didn't plan it I didn't hire a local drone, but what I did was I collaborated with a local drone flyer, and I collaborated with him after my first day of shoot because I could then show him what I'm shooting. Uh, is my voice not clear, or is it uh, is it clear now? It's the mic, man. Sorry. Is it clear? Am I loud enough for everybody? sorry technology guys and uh, i've been doing it for last 3 months i'm going crazy with technology now anyways coming back to what i did uh, i started talking to local uh, drone flyers i got in touch with one of them he, he came and he met me he showed his work but when i showed my work and when i told him okay this is that that time shoot guru never existed so don't even think i did it basis the uh, reach that i have basis the numbers that i have no nothing to do with my reach i had i was a basic filmmaker i was this is uh, back in 2016 february of 2016 and i had everything in basics i had a basic camera to work with i had a basic uh, phone that i was working with so i didn't carry my camera for the shoot so when i talked to this filmmaker when i told him what i'm planning to do with my film he agreed to give me all the shots for free 
I was using an iPhone. I and he had a Mac. We airdropped the shots onto my phone. I moved all the shots into the DJI app because I was using a DJI Osmo mobile. I moved all the shots into my DJI app. Now I knew what drone shots I have, and I knew what is the itinerary that I'm following, and I'm going. So I now knew what kind of shots I was going to take at different locations. Once I did, once I took all the shots that I had, once I had all the data bank of the shots, I reviewed them. I see what I was missing. Uh, I added additional shots. The DJI app actually gave me that track with the voiceover in it for free. This is the power of using third-party apps. Third-party apps give you additional content. DJI gives you so much additional content for free. You have no idea. The best bit about DJI app is. that if you're using an osmo mobile and if you're using a dji drone you can mix the footage because the footage has the same registration master but this particular footage was shot on an on a, a gopro uh, the guy had the uh, footage on his uh, laptop we converted the footage to hd and i took it from him and put it onto my phone i edited the first draft of this film on the dji app itself in transit i had 3 hours in transit when i was coming back to india i edited it once i knew what i was doing i i came back to india i gave all the raw footage all the track and everything to my editor and then he redid it with all the transitions with everything what you see now so that is how i created my first travel film on a phone now this acted as my portfolio when i uh launched it on facebook i tagged malaysia tourism malaysia tourism loved the film they put it up on their official page as soon as they put it on their own official page outlook india picked me up and we became the official filmmakers for outlook in india and we did approximately 134 films till date so that is how the journey in travel film making started itinerary is my short division i get to know where i'm going what i can do there and what is the key point that i need to shoot i need to know what kind of shots i can take these shots will actually allow me to shoot better and get the story out of what i'm doing so be very open minded when you're traveling about what kind of shots you will take and what you can do best with with, with whatever you have you have to be resourceful you have to be to the point and you have to manage with whatever resources you have uh what software do i use to edit now i use davinci resolve or i use uh, final cut pro because i use mac uh to mention some tags i will talk about tags towards the end we when we talk about distribution don't worry so uh, any questions till now yes the whole uh, background score except for the end tagline that is uh, malaysia truly asia which was given to us by malaysia tourism was uh, found in the dji app and the dji app is quite versatile it keeps giving you updates another app is inshot inshot gives you a lot of tracks or you can use a website called artlist a r t l i s t artlist is a beautiful website it gives you amazing amazing tracks and the best bit is about artlist uh, the website is artlist.io i'm going to show you the website when i come to the audio section uh, of today's uh, presentation but uh, the artlist.io artlist gives you uh, the ability to use that one single uh, uh uh copyright in any platform that you want to use uh, osmo 3 you tell process of getting tracks in dji uh, if you go to the dji app and if you go to edit uh, you go to music you can actually add music there and there is an option of get music over there right in the app uh, siddhant i can show it to you later as well now uh, i haven't been using it for a very long time uh, for edits but uh, i i still remember at the last time i used it with drone footage and uh, it worked guys any questions till now don't hesitate to ask i'm i will uh, open the floor for questions but any questions till now nothing let's move ahead cool we get into the most important thing now this is the execution of visuals uh the production uh, i'm vijay i'm going to talk about 4k after the, uh, right uh, in the next few slides 
एम ओ वी इज एक्सटेंशन एडिटिंग इन इन एडिटिंग इट कुड बी बिकॉज ऑफ द कोडेक दैट द एम ओ वी इज शॉर्ट इन इफ इट इज एच टू सिक्सटी फाइव यू कैन एडिट ओनली इन विंडोज इफ इट इन एच टू सिक्सटी फोर यू कैन एडिट ऑन एनी प्लेटफॉर्म मनीष फेयर कैन आई गेट द फ्री वॉइस सी इट डिपेंड्स डी जे आई एप डज नॉट ऑलवेज गिव यू ट्रैक्स विद वॉइस ओवर दिस वॉज बैक इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन वन दे ऑल्सो हैड लॉन्च दे वर गिविंग सच स्टफ बट यू कैन फाइंड सच ट्रैक्स ऑन यूट्यूब कॉल एन सी एस नो कॉपी राइट साउंड सर्च एन सी एस विद वॉइस ओवर एंड यू विल गेट अमेजिंग ट्रैक्स विद वॉइस ओवर्स Karthik, if you're doing uh, iMovie, it is enough for basics because it does give you layered editing. I use iMovie at times when I don't want to get into FCP or anything. Uh, but the problem with iMovie is if you're using very high quality uh, footage, you can't use the proxy method to edit, and your system will give up. It does not convert your footage into uh, a format that helps you. Uh, Santosh, that is what I'm coming to. Cinematic shots. Don't worry. Cool. Going ahead. The first and foremost thing in production. Now we're getting into the real game. We're talking about the execution of your film. First thing, stop living inside your head. You need to tell your crew members. You need to tell your actors. You need to tell everybody. who is a stakeholder in your film about your film about your story about what the story has to uh, be about what the story is talking about what are the different elements what are the different locations you have to stop living inside your head there is no technology built in today's day and age which will allow you to transmit knowledge like the like amir khan does in pk and you will not be able to transmit any knowledge so it is best that you tell everybody about what you're doing you need to prioritize your important coverage you need to understand what is needed and what is not and you need to understand what is needed to complete your film without which the film will be incomplete you need to have a get it done attitude if you come to an attitude which is oh kaam chal jayega post mein handle kar lenge we'll do it in post we'll edit it uh, we'll edit that bit out that can be handled in edit it won't work for you guys not everything can be handled in post and not everything will work for you in post you have to be doing everything when it needs to be done to me on post when not remissible remain flexible about your story don't be rigid if you have to make uh, compromises make compromises in doing a particular scene or shot in a particular way but do not compromise on quality do not do not compromise on story two things you will never ever 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 compromise on is quality and story because guys remember one thing in your life if you do anything anything that you make either for a zero budget free or paid project it is your portfolio it is your work it is something that you should be proud of when you show it to people if you apply for an internship with us if you apply for a job with us if you apply to work with us the first thing i will ask you is send me your portfolio and these projects any of the projects that you have worked on in the past is your portfolio so if you are yourself not proud of what you've done it will not work how to tell stories when you're making a travel video okay this is a very very good question this was a question i uh, you could have asked before also but it's okay you've asked here when you're talking about stories in travel films travel films can be divided into multiple facets the first uh, okay i go into detail in my travel film making workshops but i'm giving you some tips here uh, the first thing is uh, that you need to decide whether you're talking about the place whether you're talking about the character or you're talking about a particular incident or a particular happening of that particular place for example i'm talking about a place i would talk about the city i would talk about uh, if there is a festival happening at that time that talks a lot about the place that talks a lot about the communities communities make a place it's not only the location communities the people make a place you have to talk to people you have to have stories coming in from people the best way to look for these stories is talk to people who are uh, already there talk to people 
who are living there who've been there maybe photographers start collaborating with them because photographers will understand what you are looking for photographers will understand where you're coming from and they will actually guide you through your process of filmmaking in that travel film my best experience has been a film which i'm going to show later it's called cuisines of hyderabad it's a film that i shot on phone and some bit of dslr but 90% on phone uh was shot in hyderabad we were going into kitchens we were shooting in different restaurants the best bit was i collaborated with a food blogger from hyderabad who was able to get me entry in every top restaurant in uh, hyderabad which was my core story and which was what i had to focus on and he got me in everywhere because he knew where we had to go so when we are talking about places you need to understand their history when we are talking about uh, places you need to understand what makes a place the people right you need to understand where you are coming from or where you wa want to take your viewers to you have to do your research accordingly for example if gwalior is known for food is known for uh, carpets there are two different films for me and that is what i did when i did mp tourism i did a film on carpets and i did a film on uh food so when it depends on the situation that you're covering it depends on the kind of topics or the kind of concepts that you're building storytelling comes from there right so going ahead we are coming back to production uh meet i will take up your uh question later later yeah ramesh you're correct uh, we will we are digressing from the topic but uh kanika's question was important uh, because uh, it depends on the video that i just showed uh kanika i will uh, just uh, park your question we we will get into a q and a when we take a little bit of break in between and uh, we'll take up your question then uh coming back to production uh shoot schedules are important you need to understand or you need to tell everybody who is involved in a production when they have to come where they have to come from uh, and uh, what time they have to reach so that nobody gets delayed uh, your crew to your cast to everybody needs to be given proper schedules don't call people unnecessarily if they're not needed especially actors never make your actors wait the whole day if the scene is in the end or you're shooting that scene end of the day schedule all of this well in advance studio binder and celtex are softwares will help you schedule and will help you calculate day of days day of days is a concept where you decide on which day what props what equipment work and what cast is needed at at what location that is called day of days you decide the days on which you're shooting multiple scenes for example if i go to dubai for a location and i have 20 scenes in my film 10 of those scenes had to be uh, shot in dubai it doesn't matter if it is a climax or the first scene i will finish all the scenes in dubai and come back because i will not go back there hence you need day of days you need to understand and day of days are made based on location because you will never go back to a location once it's done you only go back if you missed out on anything not during your primary shoot then you go on to on roll when you are actually shooting you need to make people understand what you are shooting why you are shooting and what are the things that they need to take care of when you shooting them okay you need these people to understand uh, your crew your cast to understand that okay today's scene comprises of x number of people x number of cast x number of equipment how it is going to be used what is the flow going to be you need to tell this to everybody because you don't want to waste time in explaining what they have to do at the moment that thing has to be done this will also allow you to identify who is good at what and how capable are they to deliver your project so stop living inside your head have a list of important coverage that you need to cover without which your production will be incomplete have a get it done attitude do not leave anything on post remain flexible with your script and shots because you might have to move around how to do those kind of shots uh, a bit differently have a shoot schedule have day of days and definitely take care of things on roll there is no excuse for a bad production you can't come back to me and say that i did a bad production because i did not have this particular kind of thing or these resources or this 
there is just no excuse use whatever you have you have a phone that does only hd does not do 4k doesn't matter it doesn't matter what technology you're shooting or in the till the end you are delivering your story you are delivering your script look for free locations set your scenes in free locations don't have a location in your mind and develop a scene for example if i want to bungalow to shoot a scene in i might write that in a restaurant because restaurant is collaborating with me i might change the location locations are a very very big cost in delhi alone if i want to hire a house for a day it costs me anything starting about 35000 to 55000 for a day imagine that imagine the kind of money you are spending on production on rentals on hiring locations it is bad investment use as much of natural light as possible because your phones work very differently when you're shooting films on phone they work best in natural light because that is the biggest common factor that all phone companies have when it they are developing the algorithms behind the lighting inside a phone so you guys have to be sure about where you're shooting how you're shooting it and what kind of lighting you're shooting in share credit and ownership always share credit and ownership never take the full credit if somebody is even contributed a pin give them the credit because you never know who you would need again for any production that you do skimp everything but the story skimp your food like catering expense don't do expensive catering get rolls for your crew doesn't matter right but do not skimp on story do not shoot less if you need more if you need more shoot more but don't shoot unnecessarily shoot what your story needs build a following all of us have instagram accounts if you're working on a short film project that is going to be released on youtube or an ott platform which is accessible to a larger audience build a following from now start posting behind the scenes start talking about the film maybe the film comes out after 6 months but in those 6 months you will have x number of people who want to watch that film you need to start building a following you need to start identifying where you going to release there is no such thing as luck you have to be prepared for literally everything you need to understand everything and you have to be prepared for everything any questions till now no when you are telling a story you need to have a beginning a middle and an end don't all okay open ended stories work at times but don't always keep your stories open ended because you will lose attention and you will lose audience for your upcoming films so have a story that has a beginning a middle and an end uh ha huh? so, okay anyway santosh you have a question i don't understand please uh, elaborate uh okay time you have to understand what is your time constraint how much time are you spending on a particular shoot or how much time you spending in the edit how much time you spending in delivering that particular project you have to understand how you're managing time how much time it will uh, be put in pre production how much time will be put in production and how much time will be put in post production so you have to manage that time when we talk about piece to cameras uh, any vloggers here anybody who has interest in vlogging awesome quite a few here so when i say piece to camera is when you're talking into the camera or you're giving a dialogue and uh okay so when you're talking about piece to cameras when we're talking about dialogues when we uh, when you're talking about things where you're uh, delivering content via vocal 
you need to understand that how and where you're using it how much of it are you using how much of your face you're showing how much of cutaways are you getting how much of b roll is needed you need to keep your clips very short because that is the kind of attention span that viewers have today you need to clip uh, keep your uh, clips uh, very tight based on the music that you create because that will actually retain uh, attention of your users have details the audience is looking at your video only for details don't only show a wide shot of a location and leave get into details take close ups of people take close ups of nature take close ups of shops if there are shops in that uh, uh, shot let's say for example i am in shimla and i show a drone shot of shimla and i say okay i am in shimla until unless i go into the building structures until unless i go to the mall road and show the details show people walking around i will not be able to show details and details is what your audience is looking for vary your shots now i'm going to be talking about shots next so vary your shots you have to have multiple shots to create scenes a scene is a combination of different shots put together so you have to vary those shots don't stick to one kind of shots you're stuck with one kind of a lens in your phone but you can add rigs you can add things to your uh, uh, phone cameras to uh, develop more than what you can do with just the phone camera right select the perfect music that you have and keep it short when i talk about keep it short even if it is a short film keep it short for one simple reason don't prolong things do not uh, have things that bore people and do not have things that your audience will lose interest in keep it to the point and keep it short any questions in this uh karthik i'm going to come to audio and i'm going to recommend mics as well i don't know if you guys have seen what uh, i'm posting now it's a film that was shot on the iphone 11 pro and there is a behind the scenes okay there a uh, selection of right music depends on the concept that you develop and the genre i will talk about it in the audio section how to make a story for travel film making i just talked about it so for travel film making it always depends on the topic that you're doing so uh, guys we'll take these questions that are repetitive later so i'm putting a link two links uh, one is the main film okay i'm going to do it uh, separately so first i'm going to do the main film it's a very short film it's a very beautifully done film then i'm going to do uh, the behind the scenes of the same film so the first uh, link that i'm putting up uh, is a link of the main film this is the main film and the second link that i'm going to put up is the uh, behind the scenes so once you're done with the main film come back say done i'll put up the second link so that even i had that thought that this wasn't real <clears throat> that is why i have a behind the scenes of the same film
check this out guys see the behind the scenes and what actually went inside the film and come back and say done Once you're done seeing the behind the scenes, just uh, say done. We'll just wait for a few more people to come back. So, see. it's not easy to produce content that is cinematic and when people talk about uh, when people talk about doing different things when people talk about doing cinematic films when people uh, talk about uh, uh, different uh, uh, options that they have in terms of developing content you need to understand what are the kind of resources you have you need to understand what is the process that you for it are a kind of uh, yes uh, the the there was, i don't remember if it was cotton clothes were real yes so uh, coming back to the setting there you need to follow particular style of settings and you need to have particular kind of gear but if you don't even have all these kind of resources don't worry you can still create some amazing artworks and you can still create something beautiful coming out of it the first thing is the resolution when i talk about resolution you need to shoot the highest possible resolution that is available in your phone i personally prefer shooting 4k for a few simple reasons one 4k is 4 time hd if you look at the screen full hd is the purple section and 4k is the red section the purple section is actually for one fourth of the red section hence i can actually zoom in 400% uh and zoom in uh crop in uh, 400% to create my new shots or create shots or create movement create any kind of transitions and there is a lot more what i can do if i'm shooting 4k now why i say this is because for the next maybe 5 years you will be able to shoot 4k but you will not deliver 4k you will not deliver 4k to your clients you will not deliver 4k on youtube people might not even stream 4k for the next 5 years on their mobile devices and that is your major audience that is where your major audience lives so hence it is not necessary to actually shoot and edit 4k for end results what you could do is you shoot 4k but you edit full hd now what that gives you 
first thing because you're shooting 4k you get four times the quality of hd you get better sharpness you get more information you get better color when you edit and post process 4k images you will not lose any of this if you are converting it to down to full hd because you're taking something with so much information compressing it you're not losing any information you're basically compressing it into something smaller it will still look very beautiful there was a question why is, uh, somebody was asking why i shoot 4k when i started shooting 4k that was when i moved to lumix as a camera uh, we started shooting 100% 4k because for one simple reason the quality of production that i started getting the quality of the videos that i started getting once i did that was mind blowingly above the quality what i was doing before the sharpness the clarity of course you have that consumes more space of of course it is uh, tougher to post process i'm going to be talking about post processing later of course it is tough to do all of that but uh, you need to understand that when you shoot 4k when you shoot the highest possible resolution you get everything that is attached to it and you can convert it to look good when you go to smaller so guys always always use 4k footage but in case your phone does not have 4k footage don't worry about it 1080 also works frame rate frame rates are very important to understand now frame rates is the amount of pictures that are clicked to create one second of a scene of a shot fps frames per second frames per second means for video a video is a series of images your sensor captures captures one photo after another after another after another to create a seamless video if we uh, click images in a burst mode like you click so many images and then you run them it looks like a stop motion video it looks like a jerky video but it's still a video so for cinema the standard has been kept at 24 frames per second because what uh, the uh, the people the cinema when cinema was started what they understood was that if you shoot 24 frames per second you consume less film and the human eye reads 24 frames per second as a very natural motion the human eye also reads uh, 50 frames per second or 16 frames per second or 60 frames per second also but 24 frames per second was set as standard and hence it was used everywhere from your phones to your cameras every camera or every phone has this setting which says 24p or 24 frames per second at 1080 or uh, 1080p or 4k what you have to understand is 24 frames per second means that you capture 24 frames in one second to create one second of a with that motion or is captured but okay by the way cinema is also played back at 24 frames per second so the standard was set shoot cinema 24 frames per second playback cinema 24 frames per second now i want cinematic shots slow motion is beautiful when it comes to cinematic shots i love shooting slow mo but if i take a 24 frames per second shot edited on a 24 frames per second timeline and try slowing it down i get a jerk i get jerky footage why because i am trying to fit the same number of uh frames in a small in a larger timeline i'm trying to stretch it now because i stretch it it will break and i will get uh jitter i will get uh, not jitter i will get uh, yeah i will get jitter i will get a uh, uh, breaking footage so if you want to record slow mo you switch to either 60 fps most of the phones have 60 fps or you go to the slow mo mode of your phone which gives you 120 fps on full hd and 240 fps uh on uh 720p but i would always always recommend not to go above 120 fps because every time guys you have to understand this every time you change your frames per second you are changing the shutter settings of your phone also because you can't manage that manually the phone does it automatically now when your phone does this automatically you will not be able to get the footage that you desire or you will not be able to get the quality 
because of this change in shutter you will get flicker you will get a weird kind of uh, light flickering and everything also happening you have to be very careful about it but if you are shooting slow mo you will shoot higher frame rates that necessarily does not mean that your whole film needs to be shot slow mo because when you're shooting dialogues when you're shooting interviews you will shoot 24 frames per second because that is what you are playing back but if you're shooting television you will do either 30 fps or 25 fps but if you're doing digital cinema if you're doing youtube and if you're doing anything that needs to be posted online it doesn't matter you will shoot uh, you will edit 24 frames per second hence you will have either an input of 24 frames per second of shots that don't need to be slowed down or if you need to slow a particular scene down you will shoot higher frame rates but this has to be predicted right when you're shooting any questions in this so when you're shooting using your phone you get an option of 24 frames per second that is cinema 30 frames per second that is television or 60 frames per second that is kind of good enough slow mo uh, without getting any jitter should we save final file same as fps at after edit same fps of the edit timeline yes karthik for travel videos for uh, uh 224 fps once blog but the video wasn't of good quality it uh, okay quality of the video does not depend on 20, the frame rate the frame rate will only matter when you are either slowing your footage down in post or managing something to do something with it uh if you if i am recording uh, uh action if i'm recording travel films i record 60 fps but when i'm recording dialogue in that travel film when i'm recording somebody's interview i switch to 24 fps record my interview and switch back to 60 fps for my action guys 60 fps is good enough for slow mo that is at least 50% slow mo for you guys cool i hope no more questions so that i can go ahead 60 20 120 which slow mo is better 120 is better if you uh, recording very very special uh, one uh, shots guys remember when you're increasing the frame rate increasing the file size and you're reducing light so be very careful when you you're uh, shooting 120 fps uh, are not recommended to do indoors no uh, ramesh if you're shooting 60 fps you will do a 24 fps edit you will not do a 60 fps edit 60 fps edit, edit will look very unnatural Yes, the same settings apply to GoPros as well. Very much the same. The same settings apply to uh, DSLRs as well. By the way. Uh, okay, if you have shot something that is 60 FPS, yes, you can bring it down to 24. But if you shot something 24, you can't take it up to 60 FPS. That is why 24 FPS shots don't look good for most. If you accidentally capture it in 60 FPS, doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, you will not have too much of issues, but the motion of the person standing will look too much TV-like and not cinematic. Slow mo's have to be uh, recorded uh, separately. Uh, if you're doing 120 FPS and above, yes, there are a lot of options in phones depending on the phones that you have, or you can use an app which I'm going to tell you today, which is called Filmic Pro, F I L M I C Pro. Uh, then use that. If you're shooting landscapes, I like shooting 60 FPS because if I want to slow it down, let's say if I'm doing a panning shot or a moving shot, I might want to slow it down in post. So I will uh, need the higher frame rates. All right, right, going ahead. Here are a few tips. First thing, you will never, ever, ever, ever shoot vertical videos. You will shoot only horizontal videos because cinema is horizontal. Cinema broadcast digital videos are streamed 16 is to 9, and not like TikTok, IGTV. TikTok and IGTV are very, very specialized formats, and they are app specific. So, guys. do not do not shoot that for any short films or any vlogs i i hate doing it because for one simple reason one thing vertical shots are very hard to compose 
right vertical shots are very very hard to compose you can't follow rule of thirds you can't follow uh, composition rules very easily and you your frames are very tight if you shoot horizontal if you shoot horizontal videos you can actually get better footage so it is always better to shoot horizontal videos yes there is an app called uh, filmic pro uh, for android and iphone both so when you're shooting horizontal videos it actually so imagine this when compositions were made when compositions were uh, the comp rules of compositions came into existence people were only shooting landscape they were never shooting portrait hence the human eyes they uh, have a tendency of reading landscapes better than they read uh, portraits so we read landscape shots in film better than portrait shots uh, hence most of us don't like tiktok because the tiktok will uh, focus only on a subject uh, only on the person who's in the frame and not the things around him and as travelers if you're doing travel film you need that around more than the uh, subject you need to be stable this here is a tripod this here is a very basic photo tripod that i use uh, for uh, mounting my ipad what you see here is an ipad mounted onto a rig with a mic and a light this here is a phone rig right here so i can place any brand any phone here i can manage the lens uh, over here uh, if you see that the lens can be managed here i can attach lenses to this it has a mini tripod attached to it right it has a mini tripod attached to it so that i can place it anywhere i love using this setup for uh, recording time lapses i do this setup for all my uh, instagram lives and facebook lives which i do using mobile devices and also there was a time uh, there's a film that i'm going to show uh, to you guys that was shot entirely on my ipad uh, and uh, which gave me some amazing results and i had this rig uh, supporting me there uh, uh, guys i will mention the brand the of the tripods the list of the gimbals and everything in the slides when i share the presentation we don't worry with the links also this here is a gimbal for gopro and for uh, uh i uh, for phones as well personally i prefer the atom atom is a very very beautiful gimbal uh, but if i don't have the atom to my uh, disposal i uh, loved using dji i love i actually love dji the app of dji is amazing so dji osmo mobile uh Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna show you the devices again. Can every everybody see me now? Cool. So, like I said, tripod with the iPad, and so that I can uh, mount my mic on it, so that I can mount my light on it. This I use for live sessions a lot. Then I have phone rig over here, which has interchangeable lenses that I can attach, and I can attach any brand phone onto this. I don't have to be specific to a brand. Uh, the kind of lenses I also have a lens adapter over here, and these are the kind of lenses that you would need to work with. If you are buying phone lenses, uh, I'm going to tell you the brands that I work with. But if you buy phone lenses, look for glass and not plastic. So these kind of things really help you to try. This is a gimbal right here. This is a phone and a GoPro two-in-one gimbal from Feiyu Tech. uh you need a gimbal for those motion shots you need a gimbal for those uh, stability shots and anything that needs to have a cinematic motion in it then you need to lock exposure when i talk about locking exposure guys i'm going to switch my phone camera on and i'm going to show you how to lock exposure uh the thing that i'm going to be doing here in iphone is done a little differently because i'm using an android right now one second uh yes kanaka the one second uh one second guys i'm just trying to figure out the screen the two minute screens on my laptop right now yeah kanaka your question please till that time i kind of attach my phone uh kanika you're not audible 
I have unmuted you. Okay, cool. So, can you guys see the screen? Oh, why can't I go? Portrait. One second, this is too disturbing. Right, some for some reason it's not allowing me to go into landscape. Sometimes the phones act really stupid. Go into landscape, man. No. Okay. Anyways, so if you guys can, you guys see the screen? Oops, I lost my chat box. Can you guys see the phone over here? Okay. When you're shooting with the phone, one thing you have to understand in video, you will not get a pro mode. You will not get to set the settings. You will not get to uh, uh, set the uh, different settings in this. All you are stuck with a manual mode or you can go into the different kind of video uh, modes like time lapses or anything of those slow motion that you can. But you can't really uh, mess around with your shutter. You can't mess around with your ISO. You can't mess around with the aperture. In phones, the aperture is usually fixed. The only thing that moves around automatically is the shutter and the ISO and the algorithm, the AI of your phone does this automatically. So what I do is if I'm shooting something, let's say I'm shooting a scene here and I want to take a panning shot, I will click the place where I want and you see the lock sign, I will lock it. The lock sign on the screen was what I locked. I press the lock and what you see on top now is AEAF lock. What this basically does is this is locking my exposure and it is locking my focus. So if I move around, it is not changing. What happens if I don't do that? If I move around, exposure changes automatically. Your phone is trying to figure out the lighting. The phone is trying to figure out the situation you're in and adjusting everything automatically. But if I lock this bit, I take the focus first and I lock. What I've essentially locked is the exposure and the focus. Now, if I move around, see, it is not changing. So this is how the algorithms work. This is how so you have to, whenever you're shooting, especially when you're shooting time lapses, especially when you're shooting slow mos or anything, lock your uh, exposure and lock your focus because there will you will get flicker because every time I move from one place to another, it changes. So imagine the settings changing too much. It will change light a lot. I'm going to show you guys what the Filmic Pro app looks like and what is the ability this app gives me. Okay, finally it did. Take it. Okay, guys, this is what I really like about this app. They even give you tutorial. Uh, uh, guys, whatever features that I'm talking about, iPhone does all of this as well. It's not only Android. So, uh, when, uh, when I'm talking about this, so this also gives you tutorials. The Filmic Pro app is a paid app, but it's a worth investment. I made it, made that investment long time ago. What it now does is, what now I have is a very professional looking interface. An interface that is giving me sound on the right. It has an exposure wheel which is changing exposure when I move it. The circle is an exposure wheel. So wherever I put it, my camera locks exposure on that place. It won't change. It will change only if I move it around. The square is focus. It will focus. So this is what will allow me to create the shallow depth of field if I want to create any. For example, I'm here. I might want to take my focus on this. See how it has made the background a little blurred. Or I want to go into the background it shifts focus. 
this is actually what i'm doing is automatic it is automatically doing it now if i say yeah i'm an old school guy i want to do everything manual now what you get is a manual thing what i can do in the manual mode is i'm going to turn my manual again first i adjust my light right my light is set now i want to do a focus shift in my shot i can actually now focus shift smoothly between my sh shots and i love doing this on the phone and this is guys this is real focus shift by the way it's not digital focus it is an actual focus shift happening see you check it out so this is what the app really gives you the app settings are so mind blowing it uh, it has an ability to uh, select the frame rate that you're in i can actually go one by one or i can like go bounce on to frame rate 240 fps it see it uh, cropped at 240 fps it actually stopped playing at 240 fps too bad So I want to do cinema. I bring it down to twenty-four FPS. I want to do time lapse. I can set my uh, shutter, uh, my frame rates according to time lapse as well. I want to select audio. I can actually select the microphone that I'm using. If I'm using an external microphone, a Bluetooth microphone, or anything, I can add that. I can select the quality 48 kilohertz or 44 kilohertz depending. I can only do video only when I do video only it mutes my channels it does not give me sound recording anymore. Now I can actually work with my app on the kind of device that I'm using and use my device uh features as well but if you are using an Android uh I will uh, share the link of the softwares in the PPT as well. Uh, if i'm using an android i can use a c type cable if it's a c type phone i can use a c type cable to attach an external hard drive to record all my footage onto an external hard drive uh, in iphones it is only possible with the uh, iphone 11 pro uh, which has a new feature of uh, lightning tethering where you get a lightning to c type cable to tether onto ssds it is very specific then i can go into i can save everything into presets uh cms is so basically what it is doing is it is helping me manage my system that is what cms is it is the file naming system and everything if i go into hardware of it i can add things let's say if i'm using a dj osmo mobile i can use this app with both of them zoom similarly other uh, uh apps as well and of course you get anamorphic lenses you have anamorphic lenses available to you for phones which usually are cinema lenses are ultra expensive for phones they for about 10 12000 rupees you can get those and you can actually attach them and get uh, anamorphic shots i can select the camera that i'm shooting with uh, if your phone has multiple cameras your uh, device can also allow you to select the cameras as well now look at this so i have turned on stabilization so it is digitally stabilizing my footage versus what you see This is this. now this is stabilized footage. This is an inbuilt stabilizer. What is happening is it is cropping the footage and stabilizing it using a wrap stabilization. Because if I move remove this, it's a much more uh, motion centric and jerky thing. I can add light. I can turn the light on and turn the light off. I can attach grid lines. I can remove grid lines. Guys, always, always, always work with grid lines. and that's pretty much it so that is the software then you can play back you can have an auto preset you can have everything i can do uh, peaking which tells me where my focus is if my focus is going behind or if my focus is coming in front it tells me that uh, this is focus peaking right here look at that so it will tell me where my focus is it makes my footage look black and white though but uh, that's okay it will just help me uh, do better shots uh, the software would cost you uh, somewhere around 1200 rupees if i'm not wrong i don't know the uh, current rates i'm just going to stop that so, so it's, it's a very very very, very, very one second one second
So it's a very versatile software that allows you to really, really bring out the capabilities that are there of your phone and what your phone can do. And guys, uh, Filmic Pro doesn't pay me anything to say all of this, but uh, we've not collaborated with them yet. <laughs> uh, 1200 bucks permanent. I mean, it's yours. You keep getting updates. You don't have to pay again. It's a one-time purchase on App Store and uh, Play Store, both of them. So going ahead, uh, use grid lines, use guidelines to compose your shots better. Don't hesitate to do it. Every phone has a guideline. Every phone has uh, the ability, the capability to shoot uh, with guidelines. The guidelines will actually help you frame better. They help you compose better. They help you do things uh, like align your phone better, have straight lines in your, phone, uh, in your shot because phone being a small device, it becomes hard to keep straight. You can't judge the shot and when you come on to edit and if you shot 1080p only, you can't really fix it in post because it'll be a problem for you. Never, ever, ever do a digital zoom. Never do that. Digital zooms are pathetic. They're bad. What you're basically doing is you are ruining the resolution of your footage. You are digitally zooming in. You're digitally going in and you will end up losing quality. So never, ever, 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 ever use the digital zoom feature of your phone. Use lenses. This here, uh, if you're looking on the screen, uh, Guys, can you see the screen? You can, uh, if you're on a phone, you can swipe right to see my screen. So this lens here, this is a lens from IOGrapher. This is actually, look at the flares, look at the uh, uh, flares that you're getting, look at the glare that you're coming onto them. This shows that it's a beautiful lens. It's a very high quality lens. It is actually glass compared to this. Uh, one second, I'm gonna stop sharing and show my video. Can you see uh, see the whole screen now? Can you see? Can you guys see me? Cool. And I'm gonna pin myself as well. One second. Okay. So this look at this. Look at the glares that are coming on the small one. This is a really cheap one. This is for like three hundred rupees. This here is an IOGrapher uh, lens, and it is actually pure glass. This is not plastic. It is a very well built. It comes with I, with an adapter. I can uh, attach it to any phone that I want uh, in any orientation that I want, and I can use it without grips. I can use it without rigs. So I necessarily don't need it. And this is so handy. This is a 2x adapter. So I can zoom in two times using the same footage that I was and I will not lose quality. Guys, this is important because if you digitally zoom into anything, you will always lose quality in your footage. So a digital zoom is a complete, complete no, no. You will never, ever, ever, ever digitally zoom into your shots. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you a sample uh, of just right now of what the frame looks like. Well, okay, uh, guys, I will share the footage that would be better because uh, the next video that I'm showing it was actually shot using this, this exact rig right here with this lens uh, with a mic. So this is a DT mic. This is a lighter light. I like uh, using aperture lights. Uh, these are brilliant lights when it comes to shooting in low light situation and shooting interviews. Uh, when I show, come to the lighting bit, I will talk about it a little more. Uh, so in lighting, you have to understand that you need to use lights which are flicker free. This light here is 100% flicker free. I can actually record slow mos using this light without getting any flicker in my footage. This is an Aputure MZ LED. And if you're shooting it on the phone, the best bit you can do is you can create effects using this light. And I can add color to my shots. I can add anything to do my shots and I can control the whole damn light with my uh, app, which is called Sidious link. It comes with an app called Sidious link. Now what the app really allows you to do is uh, I'm just going to connect to one of these. So the Sidious Link app will allow me to actually change the mode of the light. It has uh, a lot of modes in the light. Like this is a fireplace mode. It is it, it imitates what a fireplace would look like. Then you have uh, 
pulse you can uh, imitate uh, different things in this lightning so you have so many modes that you get in lights and this is a very very versatile light and a beautiful light if you're shooting with your phones because in phones you what you get with shooting in bad light is flicker because your phone will adjust it when i was giving you a demo there was a flicker i'll what i'll do is i'll show you guys flicker again if i can this is uh, something you guys need to take care of when you are actually uh, shooting in these situations yes it the works brilliantly at night and depending on what you're shooting like for example if i'm doing subjects uh, if i'm doing uh, people uh, shots i use this light a lot with my uh, phone itself and i record a lot of things so let's say if you see right now if i turn the manual mode on and if i i'm going to turn this off i want to turn this off and i want to turn this off this off so if you see in the manual mode uh i'm just going to yeah can everybody see this the brand is called apuchur a p u t u r e i will uh, share the link and you guys can get a discount as well so if you see the screen right now uh on the screen itself you can see that one second there is a flicker in the light if i'm pointing it at the light there is a very weird flicker in the light if i come here uh, there is a flicker here as well if i change my settings to something i can increase or decrease uh, based on iso look at that so this is the flicker that i'm talking about you see how the footage is actually flickering how it is literally literally running on the screen so this is a flicker when you when i'm pointing at lights that are powered by electricity but what if i pointed at this this light on the other hand the light itself is not going to flicker what is flickering is the ambiance check it out if my ambiance is flickering my light is not flickering at all see that i adjusted my light according to what i had and the flicker just went away this is what flicker free lights do this is what flicker free leds do and you need such high quality uh, leds to work with you need such high quality uh, leds to actually give you the results that uh, you are looking for the light is called uh, apuchur mc led and uh, it costs you about uh, 9900 you can't remove uh, noise uh, you can remove noise from audio but you can't remove noise from video because it will ruin the quality it will ruin the contrast it will ruin the colors as well by purchasing how can we check flicker okay reduce the shutter change the shutter settings of your phone or shoot slow mo if you move to the slow mo mode it will uh, tell you whether you have flicker or not Uh, the brand and the model is the brand is called a uh, Pucher A P U T U R E. I'm putting in the chat box. Philip Line on T A N A T I Y A N A. So this is the brand and the uh, the basically uh, the model. So it's a very beautifully. Then by the way, it comes. It is an inbuilt charger, and it had has mag magnets on it as well. Thank Lakshya. so coming back to uh, lighting you need to be very 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 specific about lighting because when you're shooting with phone lighting is something uh, which will actually affect your shots the best way to shoot uh, without gain and add light with phones you can't really do too much even if you're using the filmic pro app you can't really mess around uh, too much ramesh digitech doesn't even come close to uh, this light or simpex or even uh, godox leds don't even come close to this light then you need to use portable lighting because portable lighting will make your setup setup really portable and will take it things forward you need softness light has to be soft if i take the diffuser off it comes with this silicon diffuser if i take a look how harsh the light is even it's very hard for me to open my eyes but if i add the diffuser 
it just makes it soft has a nice flow on it and you need to have these diffuser options if you don't have come up with diffuser or diffuser options you will struggle diffusing your light all in all mix natural resources look for natural resources if you if you come to uh, you shooting indoors and you shooting in the day look for a door or a window that can throw natural light uh, rain lights are good if you're doing uh, interviews uh, and without specs if anybody has got specs ring lights are a complete no no so when it comes to using light use light uh, lights that are flicker free use lights that have uh, softness in them use lights have, that have different settings in them because you need that versatility you need to go from warm to uh, cool you need to have different effects because as an independent filmmaker you will not be able to add too many lights to your setup i love using this light when i'm shooting food and as a travel filmmaker you really 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 shoot food a lot you go to different restaurants you are in different situations if you're doing cuisines these kind of lights really help you uh, and i can vouch for it because when i was shooting uh, food in hyderabad and when we were shooting in those tight small kitchens of different restaurants it was very very hard for us to shoot with big lights we ended up getting very grainy footage at times and uh, as well difference between reflectors and diffusers as the name goes reflectors reflect light diffusers let you allow to uh, allow the light to go through but uh, make it soft any questions on lighting till now okay now here are a few tips about lighting let's say you lighting a subject so never light a subject on eye level never do it you will end up catching the light uh, light in their glasses or even in their eyes it looks very bad always have it i'm going to just tilt it up always have it at a 45 degree angle from a distance have that distance look at this look at the light that is falling on my face right now versus if i take it little away from me and look at the kind of light that is falling on me now this is me without light this is me with light the whole mood changes so for you this right here is rembrandt lighting this is nice uh, lighting in front that lights up the face i want a little dramatic lighting i oh, oh, sorry this is butterfly lighting i go on the side this is rembrandt lighting i'm going to say uh, what is the light it's the same light it's a smaller version of this light uh this if i take it on the side and i create a small triangle here this is called rembrandt lighting i'm going to show you the lighting i'm going to share the lighting setups with you guys in the presentation so don't worry if i come right on the side this is 50 50% uh right so this is called split lighting if i put it from the back this is uh, back lighting another thing you guys have to be really uh, uh thoughtful about is the how to light up a subject a person the big side or the short side if i'm sitting like this this is my big side this is my short side if i light my subject from here this is where i'm lighting the short side if i'm lighting my subject from here this is where i'm lighting a big side so depending on the situations you are uh, you have to use lighting uh, uh, very very carefully and create drama flat lighting does not work um, you're not in a shadow we don't live in a shadowless world you need shadows in your shots you just need to control them for them to look better and guys i'm going to send uh, slides with the uh, light setups also so don't worry best angle for light 45 degree angle from a distance if ideally i want to put it i would put it up like this this is the best angle this is only at uh, what 39% right now the intensity let's increase the intensity to 100% you'll have a better idea so from an angle so what it does is it takes a full coverage if because if i bring it closer it'll get darker if i take it away it gives me a nice flow to it any other questions related to light cool going ahead use as much natural light as possible guys you have to understand one thing your phones work on an ai algorithm uh karthik this smaller light is even more expensive than that this costs about uh, 15000 because this is waterproof yes it is the uh, the the light because uh, because your phones work on an algorithm because your phones work on ai they 
take the settings automatically even if you're using filmic pro there will be some settings that the phone does automatically you will end up getting gain you will end up have having grainy footage be very very careful of that don't let that gain come don't don't let that grainy footage come add light to your shots and add uh have an additional source of light always available to you or otherwise don't shoot in very low light situations this is what i'm talking about video uh which angle is good for food photography video it's very aesthetic i mean it depends on where what are you shooting if i'm shooting uh food that is tall i need light from the side if i'm shooting food that is on a plate i need uh, directional light uh you guys can if you uh, don't have budgets for very expensive digitech makes cheaper lights costing somewhere close to 3000 rupees um, godox makes cheaper lights than this costing about 5 to 6000 rupees but if you really want to focus on quality i would recommend this light uh vein uh, like for vines and sketches uh, ring light also works i use this for all my videos uh, any blogs that i do on a single vlog that any vlogs that i shoot i use this i don't shoot anything else uh now we we'll use external lenses for one simple reason like we discussed before you will not at all zoom so you will need lenses that zoom for you you will need lenses that will add quality but make sure the lenses that you use are glass and they are not plastic you get lenses that are cheap as cheap as 300 rupees on amazon and you get lenses that are as expensive as this for about 4000 rupees uh, on amazon uh, so you have skyfi as a brand you have moment as a very very amazing brand you have iographer which is a brand so all these brands of phone lenses will give you the additional quality that you need when you're zooming in or you're shooting macro or you're shooting wide the one thing that i don't recommend these to do is a fish eye or a tele a 8x or a 10x zoom because that's just not realistic and not right so use external lenses uh, they are getting cheaper but whenever you buying an external lenses go for glass and not plastic otherwise you will lose quality uh no softbox is part of the light if it's a flicker free led it won't flicker So I'm going to show you guys a film that I did for Hong Kong, and this I did for Hong Kong tourism after Malaysia tourism film. Hong Kong tourism uh, sanctioned me some some budget for the film, but this film was entirely shot on an iPad Pro actually, uh, and a One Plus uh, and an iPhone six. So I had three devices shooting different things in different places uh, because I when I if I was uh, shooting time lapses, I needed something to shoot something else as well. Uh, the major problem with mobile lenses is it. fit it with the phone camera what do you suggest this so get a clip on these can these big clip ons work these big, big clip ons literally fix anywhere and these are very heavy duty clip ons uh, it's like a clamp it will not fall off it will not move no matter what you do uh, but it makes your phone a little heavy to work with or you can get a rig like this this is a, a beast grip copy it's an e image rig it's dirt cheap it costed me less than 4 5000 bucks and it is beautiful when it comes to uh, shooting uh, with these lenses if i'm vlogging i don't recommend any lens use the natural lens that comes with your uh, phone itself never ever use additional lenses because you are very close to your face when you're recording and it gives you a bad impression uh your phone vary uh, from uh, focal length so i wouldn't say there is a 50 mm lens available but you'll have to see what focal length will increase if you add a 2x or a 3x uh, converter no you uh, we can uh, okay this rig can be uh, used with bigger gimbals but smaller phone gimbals are a better option this film has i have used gimbals i have used drones i again collaborated with somebody in hong kong to shoot this film um and uh, the best bit was that i was able to mix footage of my phone with the drone and i did a lot of creative shots using this uh which i will discuss as we go ahead once you're done please come back and say done
Anupam, we'll wait for everybody else to come, then I'll discuss the project. Okay. Coming down to all your questions, the time lapse questions, I'm going to discuss it when I'm going to do the time lapse section. So uh, I know this is interesting, but uh, we will discuss it there. Uh, or I can, what? okay, let's take it up here and uh, I will do the other shots in between. So there are two, three things that you need to take care of when you're doing time lapses as well on the phone. Uh, I did a day to night of the uh, Macau strip. I did a day to night of the uh, city skyline. I did hyperlapses uh, where uh, I actually sat in front of the bus and uh, the bus moved. I had a motion time lapse uh, done with the gimbal. So I was using a DJI Osmo mobile. That was the first version of the DJI Osmo mobile. The DJI app gave me a capability to, to have a motion time lapse in which I could go left to right, top to bottom and stuff like that using just my phone on the gimbal and I can program it to get the shots. So those kind of motion time lapses and moving hyperlapses I would get only with the gimbal. Uh, and I would switch to the time lapse mode and I would start moving, keeping my shot in center, keeping my stability in center, keeping my subject in center, and it worked. The day to night shots, on the other hand, I uh, for the uh, Macau strip, I did a 10 minute time lapse in the morning and a 10 minute time lapse of the same frame in the evening. And in post production, because I was shooting 4K, I was shooting the highest possible resolution. In post production, I actually combined both of them to create the effect of a day to night time lapse happening. I saved a lot of time because if I would have sat there from day to night, I would have not got that effect of the lights popping up of everything just lighting up uh, that easily. I could have made a mistake very easily in the light settings. So I tricked it. I recorded about 10, 15 minutes on 10, 15 minutes in the evening. Then there is a lot of masking that has been done in the video as well. The day to night of the last, uh, the skyline, uh, Pankaj, I'll just tell you the day to night of the last skyline is basically what I did was I was there in the evening. We knew there was a time. Okay. Uh, that skyline, the city skyline has a timing fixed at which the lights come up of these buildings. So we knew a uh, day before I had actually been there. So I knew what time these lights would come up and how much lighting is there. So what I did was I overexposed my shot in the time lapse mode using the uh, AE lock. I overexposed my shot. I locked my focus. I locked my uh, exposure. I overexposed it manually and I let it shoot and come down to exposures because if you look at it, because it is overexposed, some of the buildings uh, get overexposed when the lights come up totally. So that was uh, a flaw in that shot. But since the shot itself looks so beautiful, nobody even notices it. So when you're shooting time lapses, one, always lock your exposure, always lock your focus. You will always, always do it manually. You will never do it auto because if you do it auto, it will flicker. If I'm recording a sunset in auto, if I'm recording a day to night in auto, what will happen is as soon as uh, the camera was re uh, the shot is reaching uh, low light, the camera will bump up the light and I will get bright again. Everything will be lit up again and I will not get a perfect day to night happening. So I have to have it in manual. And the best trick is fix your frame, do once in the morning, come back, fix your frame again, do once in the night, shoot with the same focal length, shoot with the same camera, shoot with the same equipment and uh, shoot the highest possible resolution, shoot 4K time lapses because when you crop and add uh, like layer it on top of each other to uh, manage the alignment, it will help you a lot. 
difference between a time lapse uh, video and a hyperlapse video the basic difference is in a hyperlapse the camera will move in a time lapse or even a motion time lapse the camera will not move physically it will stay there uh, and motion time lapse are usually what left to right top to bottom on the same axis or a different axis uh, but a hyperlapse the camera physically moves uh guys one second before anybody leaves uh, just give me one second add, add yourself to this group this is where all the content will be shared thanks ani uh transitions are either created or you can use pre made transitions the one thing that you need to take care of it if you are going to do too many transitions in post is that you will have to have a pre roll and a post roll to your footage you you should have about 3 to 5 seconds before you start shooting uh, like when you start the shoot uh, when you start shooting and before you cut you have 3 to 5 seconds of a hold a block so if i'm shooting let's say i start from here and i'm doing a pan i will press record i will hold for 3 to 4 seconds here i will move capture my shot i will hold 3 4 4 seconds here so it's called a pre roll and a post roll of a shot coming back to type of cinematic shot so what is a scene a scene is a combination of shots so this is the last part of what we are going to discuss before we go into post production uh, a scene a cinematic scene is always a combination of shots and the perfect combination of shots will make a scene look beautiful make a scene look nice and tell a story so uh the first kind of a scene is an extreme wide shot or an extreme long shot this is also called an establishing shot this is what establishes your place let's say if you're traveling if you looked at the travel films both the travel films that are shared they have drone shots to establish the place they have drone shots to establish what is happening where i am what i am doing and where where i am doing it the only thing that i lack in extreme uh, shots is that it lacks detail uh, my character if my film is focused on character my character will not be visible because if you see this shot on screen you can establish where it is and what it is but you can't establish what is there uh, in the foreground there right in the middle it looks like cars but you really don't know so you really need to go into detail to establish character which comes to a long shot or a wide shot when you do a wide shot or long shot it should be established it is called a wide shot or a long shot and not an extreme wide or extreme long shot when you are establishing some character you are establishing people in your shot you are establishing objects in your shot which are recognizable now so a long shot or a wide shot will help you recognize your subjects or we we'll also talk about details now if i want to establish the characteristics of my Sure. For example, if I'm traveling, and if I'm traveling, let's say in Thailand tomorrow, and I am at a beach, I need to establish the beach. So I might take a, a full shot of the people uh, who are there on the beach in their attire. Maybe they're in the boarding shorts. Maybe they 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 they're in their beach wear. So I need to establish that what these people are wearing and what they are, what are their characteristics, what kind of people are present. in that place at that time so a full shot the full shot which is from head to toe will establish the characteristics of your character what they're wearing what their posture is what their frame is talking about what their face expressions are talking about it will talk about all of that see in this the face is not that visible but at the same time i can make out what are the different characteristics of the different people that are in the shot now if you want to make out the expression if you make out the emotion you need to go into a medium wide shot a medium wide shot is cut just above the knees it is not cut at the knees ne guys there's a tip a pro tip never ever cut your subject on joints never cut them at ankles elbows or on their knees always cut right right above your knees or your elbows or your ankles or uh, much above so never on the joint never cut people on the joint when you framing because remember you're shooting 16 is to 9 so you will have to cut your subject when you're going in when you're zooming in or you're moving in your subject and you will have to cut your subject so never cut them on uh, joints you will have to cut them right above or below it 
cowboy short is a short that came into existence when uh, cowboy movies were being shot when uh, western movies were being shot and the basic reason was that cowboys had guns and uh, the filmmakers wanted to show these guns because everything happened with those guns they would do tricks with those guns they would move those guns around so they would have fun with those guns but a cowboy shot is a power shot you look at any action that is going to happen or any action that is going to take place in the film right before an action there will be a cowboy shot which is the shot at the thigh of your subject which shows power which shows action and which shows action that is going to happen it increases the uh, in uh inquisitiveness of your audience and it increases the whole storytelling of power that is coming from your subject uh, all superheroes uh, when they are established be it uh, avengers be it iron man be it anything any movie you pick up wonder woman wonder woman or anything you will get a shot in which they are established in the superhero's power that has been cut uh, at their thigh a medium shot is cut on the chest this is more detailed but the characteristic of a medium shot is the characteristics of the medium shot are that the background is still very very much visible the background is established the action in the scene is established what is happening in the scene is established and the shot is telling you the expressions of your subject and also is talking about what is happening in the scene so you guys uh medium shots are very crucial when you are establishing the details of a character and the scene itself you go into close ups close up shots are purely expression based some of the background is still visible in a close up uh you still know that the person is at the same place when you took the wide shot uh kanika i'll just tell you that uh, let me finish this and then i'll come back to the first slide and tell you what is suitable for what so uh, uh close up will go into detail of expressions an extreme uh, uh, sorry a mid close up will uh, even show a background a close up will actually diffuse your background more it will take away details from background now the focus is purely on subject if you look at it, a medium close up medium close up had a lot of things happening in the background you could easily be distracted a close up will take you away from the distraction get you perfectly onto your subject and diffuse the background so tele lenses are used for close up and not wide lenses and you can actually uh diffuse the background for your audiences then you have extreme close up extreme close ups are stories extreme close ups are people centric extreme close ups are all about expression it does not about where you are what you are doing it is about what is going in your mind and what do you want your subject and your uh, viewer to at where do you want them to connect this is where extreme close ups come in and extreme close ups are very necessary to when you go into detail of any film or any scene any shot now where to use them if you are going into details you use extreme close up close up and medium shots if you are interviewing somebody or if you are taking talking to people and they are standing you use a medium shot but if they are sitting you use a, sorry medium close up if they are standing but if they are sitting you use a medium shot because when people sit they have a tendency of or of slouching so if you have too much of a tighter shot uh, then your person is slouching you will not be able to get the quality that you are looking for so if you are doing interviews i personally prefer taking interviews on medium shots uh cutting my subject on the waist uh, above the right above the waist below the elbows because i need that hand movement so if you look at my frame right now this is where i would ideally cut it uh, right now in the frame my head is also cutting but this is because i need the hand movement and i need to show the elbows where the hands are moving from because if my hands are moving like this it just looks weird and uh, you cut the joints off it looks very weird are there any questions related to composition and shot types because these are the shots that will make your short cinematic or not no okay i'm going to show you guys a film uh, this was a this is an this is an old film of mine uh, it was mixture of uh, a lot of things but 90% uh, a mid shot a medium shot is very good prints for a vlog this is a oh, sorry one second 
This is a film that we shot in Hyderabad. It has interviews. It has a lot of close-ups, and you will understand. It has a lot of movement. Cinema is all about movement. You have to have movement, and the movement has to be a necessary movement and not an unnecessary one. Please go, come back, and say done, and we'll continue. This is uh, probably the last section before post-production. This is actually an old uh, film of ours, uh, which we did in when we were shooting for Telangana tourism. And uh, due to the restriction of the space in those restaurants, the restriction of the space and the time constraint. Uh, one second. Due to the time constraint that we have uh, when we were shooting this, because we had just one day to shoot all these restaurants, uh, we actually ended up shooting too much on the phone because that was so compact. That was so. Uh, available for me that was so 
uh, easy for me to shoot with that I did not actually uh, find it a constraint to uh, manage lighting. I, I was shooting in available light. Uh, I was moving with the gimbal. So I had a DJ uh, Osmo again over there. So I was taking those nice movement shots on the, fo uh, on the phone itself uh, of the food, which I wouldn't get with the DSLR until unless I'm carrying a big gimbal. But if I carry a very big gimbal, uh, like a DSLR gimbal into a very small kitchen, already there is no space for me moving. So at times, you will actually get stuck with a lot of things wherein you will... Uh, not be able to utilize the full potential of whatever uh, pro equipment that you have, but rather you will actually end up uh, shooting something with whatever you've got. So the best way to do it is just shoot with whatever you've got and you will be able to get the quality and the quantity of shots very, very easily. So any questions about this so far? Non-copyright sounds, there are a couple of websites. Uh, if you go on YouTube, you have NCS, non-copyright sounds, but they need credit. You can't use it for commercial use. If you are looking for copyright sounds for commercial use, like for clients, for anybody, you need to go to websites. Uh, you need to go to websites like artlist.io. Uh, guys, I don't know if you guys can actually, I'm just going to open the website and show you what is the range of things that this website does give you. And if anybody wants, I can give you guys a referral link that will help you get a discount as well. Just one second. I'm going to show you guys what the website's all about. Yeah. So this is artlist.io. So what artlist.io is a website that actually has a resource of abundant tracks that are available for you to use royalty free in any kind of production. The best bit what I like about it is it actually gives you tracks based on the mood of the film that you're doing. So it could be, let's say I'm doing a hopeful film or I'm doing a peaceful film. I can pick that up and I can test the track and I can run the track if I want. I can download the track, test it, maybe change it. And no, this is not free guys. This is, this has a yearly subscription. The yearly subscription gives you unlimited downloads and uh, the yearly subscription gives you uh, copyright free on any platform. Even if you're using it for advertisements on broadcast, you don't need additional licenses. Guys, remember one thing. This is a tip again, and we faced issues about this. If you are shooting something that might be used on TV later, do not use stock footage or do not use music without broadcast license. You need that broadcast license or you will get into very, very big uh, trouble. Uh, let me check what is the cost if I'm not, no, I'm not signed in. So let's see the pricing. The pricing uh, is uh, only uh, like if you go for music, it's only $16 a month, uh, $199 if you pay annually. And it gives you unlimited uh, footage to uh, work with. It gives you unlimited footage to uh, utilize to your benefit. Uh, I am going to give you the link. Uh, A-R-T-L-I-S-T dot I-O. This is the link and if any sound we are using to post or for own page purpose will copyright issues come like a lot of videos came on Corona for a No, so not really. If you do, if you do give due credit, uh, usually uh, the only problem is that you will not be able to monetize it and that's pretty much it. Uh, you will not face any issues uh, until unless uh, you are uh, selling it to somebody that is where the problem comes in. See, this is where this website really helps you uh, in choosing the kind of tracks in choosing the kind of music that you're building in choosing the kind of video that you're building. I can select the genre I want to go into. I can select the theme. If my theme is food, it will give me tracks based on food. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Can you guys, uh, can you guys listen to the music when I play it? No, okay, let it be. Uh, if you go to the website, you check it out, you check it out on the different... Uh, uh, Santosh, I'll uh, put the referral link in the group. Don't worry, you guys will get it. Uh, 
and the best bit is about this website what i really love is that uh, i can use it n number of times and it gives me vocals also and it gives me tracks in which i can skip vocals also it gives me layered tracks as well so guys whenever you select music whenever you working with sound uh, be very careful with uh, what kind of music you select because copyrights are a very very big thing these days and copyrights can actually get into you a lot of trouble uh, so be very very careful be ultra careful about it can we use youtube audio library uh, again depends if that track on youtube uh, audio library uh, has a uh, mention saying that you can use it with credit you can but you can't use it for commercial uh, purposes it is for personal and private purposes only if you on how to shoot multiple angles with one phone or camera well you have to do it again uh, if you're doing an interview you have to do the interview again if you're doing a scene of a film you have to do it again and again remember the time when people just had one cameras and one lens there was a time when cinema was invented and people couldn't afford more than one camera for a production you had to shoot everything again and again so you need to be very careful about it and you need to be very candid about it and you need to work with whatever resources you have you come to audio audio is ultra 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 uh important when it makes or breaks a film if i'm recording sound if i'm recording dialogues if i'm recording ambience i need good sound your phone mics are not good you need external mics i use this mic from dt i use it almost on all my productions and it is compatible with my phone as well it has a 3.5 mm jack that is phone compatible One second, I'll just log out from here. So this mic right here, this is a shotgun mic. Uh, why I personally prefer shotgun mics is you just mount it on your camera, you keep moving around. One second. So you just keep uh, you just mount it on a camera. You keep moving around. This has to be directional. If you're putting uh, it on the camera, you're facing the subject. This is fine. But let's say I want to shoot it off subject. This is the angle you work it with. It has to be like this. At a 45 degree angle from a distance, like you would use a light. And uh, yes, you can use a mic and a gimbal together. You use wireless mics. This is a DT mic. This is a DT D3. Uh, it's a very beautiful mic. Uh, it is a powered mic, so it has an inbuilt power. You don't need to phantom power it, so it works very well with phones. You just need a very uh, like a charged AAA battery, and it works very well. It is compact. The best bit is the size of the condenser, because if you look at the condenser of this, and you look at the condenser of a lapel mic. This is what the difference is. Lapel mic is this small. A gun mic is this big. A shotgun mic will always give you better quality. But if you are in situations where you have to take a wider shot of your subject, you will have to use lapel mics. Lapel or lavalier mics. Uh, price Karthik, I think, is about eight thousand bucks. I'm I'm not sure. It's a pro mic. There are cheaper versions also. A lapel needs, like it says, it's a collar mic. It needs to be clipped either here or as close to your face as possible. But in case you can't uh, mic so your person up uh, on the outside, you have to mic it from the inside. Use uh, doctor's tape. Use uh, tapes that are available to you. Uh, the brand. Uh, just one second, I'll tell you which makes this very special uh, device. A very special tape that is used only for. Uh, hooking up mics it's called ursa straps i'm just going to show it to you guys one second so i i i personally use dt mics the dt mics are very very high quality they're now available in india as well at a very very affordable price they're not that expensive anymore so what you see here uh, is a brand called uh, ursa straps now what ursa straps does is it what's it what ursa straps does is it gives you an object uh, or a capability to mic up your subject from the inside from inside their clothes you can mic up the subject so that you don't get the cloth rubbing you don't get the rubbing sounds of anything and you get very crystal clear sounds they have some amazing amazing products that are available to them and these uh, products are very very versatile these products are 
uh, not that expensive. Rikotech, on the other hand, is very, very expensive. You get road as an option, but I personally prefer uh, Deity. And of course, then you can go for an external uh, recorder like a Zoom external recorder. This is an external studio recorder, which gives me balanced sound. Uh, guys, when I talk about balanced sound and when I talk about a high quality sound, I am talking about XLR inputs. Uh, if you look at the camera again, uh, this here is an XLR input. Uh, your balanced mics will always use this and your cameras and your phones have a 3.5 mm jack. This is a 3.5 mm jack uh, that goes there. So for these, you will need very high end mics as well. High end boom mics like the uh, DT D3. Uh, and the others have uh, XLR uh, inputs as well, outputs as well, so and they give you very beautiful sound. Uh, always, always never compromise on your quality of sound, never compromise on the quality of your ambience uh, sounds also that you do. Concentrate on the sound a lot and get the best and cleanest sound. Uh, don't depend on your phone sound for everything. Try recording it separately. Uh, if you can't uh, afford a mic or you can't get a mic, Get a Bluetooth dongle, uh, Bluetooth headphone uh, headset for your uh, phone that works well as well. Uh, with the OnePlus, you need a, a 3.5 mm to C type converter, or you can also use a Bluetooth mic. Uh, there is a brand called Sara Monic. Sara Monic makes uh, mics specifically for phones, for Androids, and for. Uh, I'll just show you these mics. These are pure, I love these mics. Uh, one second. They're expensive. Uh, a Saramonic mics cost you about uh, 20,000 rupees, uh, give, or, give or take, uh, when I'm recording onto the phone. But I'll show you what it really, uh, I love this. That's for an iPhone and I want to show you an iPhone, then I'm going to switch to an Android as well. So what you see here, this is actually for an iPhone. They make something very similar uh, for uh, uh, Android as well. So the, uh, the transmitter goes directly onto your phone. You have a wireless receiver that comes to you and using a lapel mic, you can actually do wireless sound and this works beautifully. You can, uh, you can mount your phone onto a gimbal and use it. You can uh, uh, put the phone away and uh, get some amazing clean sound. So you need something like this. It is expensive. This costs approximately 20,000 rupees, uh, give or take. Uh, because of the lockdown right now, it is expensive. Uh, post lockdown, we are expecting it come to come down to about 15,000 rupees. But again, these are expensive things, and they but they will add value. They will add quality to your productions. Uh, sorry about that. To what you're planning to do, to what you're doing, and you need very very good quality sound to actually have a very good quality video. Uh, again, Saramonic, if you want to record directly onto your phone, uh, I personally use DT D E I T Y, uh, DT D three. Uh, I will focus. I will all leave everything uh, presentation. I'm gonna work hard and add the links to everything today. So you guys, when you guys get the presentation on the WhatsApp group, you guys will get the links as well. Now we talk about the final and the most important thing, which is post production workflow. When you're doing post production, the first thing you need to take care of is. Uh, Anupam Boya mics are okay. They're not of that good quality. Sorry, I'm bouncing back. I missed a lot of questions. Uh, a way we can remove ambient noise from audio. You have to clean ambient noise. Uh, ideally, when you're shooting, before shooting, you have to make sure there is no noise. But if, if you get stuck with some noise in your video, uh, there are softwares like uh, Fruity Loops. There are softwares like Adobe Audition. There are softwares like even in Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, uh, you can remove uh, sound which application should we use for color grading uh, i use davinci for color grading uh, i'm going to come down to that as well so don't worry so first thing first when you're doing post production you need to dump your footage you need to have multiple backups stop using uh, 
slow uh, older hard drives stop using those slim hard drives use ssds instead 90% of my comp, uh, things work on ssds these are expensive but these are compact i can shake them i can do whatever with them i will still not lose data whereas in a smaller hard drive you will end up losing data if you physically damage it it is irrecoverable रमेश कह रहे आस पास कितना दूर है साउंड माइक में नहीं आएगा कैसे चेक करें हेडफोन्स ओके फोन्स के साथ इट इज हार्ड टू हैव टू नो व्हाट इज द साउंड सो बेस्ट वे टू डू इट इज यू रिकॉर्ड अ सीन यू रिकॉर्ड अ डेमो सीन यू डू अ प्लेबैक राइट देयर ऑन लोकेशन यूजिंग गुड हेडफोन्स using good headphones you will be able to record uh, check the sound check the ambient check everything right there do a dummy uh, dummy roll people will make mistakes if you're doing interviews so do a dummy roll uh, go to a place do a dummy roll with yourself and you will know what kind of sound you are actually recording so guys work on ssds work with ssds create at least one backup onto a powered hard drive work edit on powered hard drives only don't work on portable hard drives they're not that great powered hard drives or 3.5 inch hard drives are recoverable uh, smaller hard drives or not let's say now we're coming to editing when it comes to editing you have multiple options uh, you have an option which is a free option available to you davinci uh, davinci resolve uh, is a free option davinci resolve gives you all that you need in editing uh, all that you need in uh, processing your uh, images uh, videos except that in the uh, resolve version which is the free version you can't import raw video but you necessarily don't shoot raw video using your uh, phone so for phones it is perfect davinci resolve is brilliant it gives you very high quality edit options it gives you very high uh, quality uh, options to create transitions to have uh, multiple timelines to have color grading done to your shots so uh, you can get all of this uh, for free in the davinci resolve it is available for mac and for windows guys we are launching a course on davinci editing on davinci resolve if anybody is interested do hook us up uh, it is going to be a 10 10 uh, day course it's a longer course it's an online course but it is a 10 day course that we are going to be launching very very soon so there is one uh, advice that i give to everybody and uh, use proxy edits only what you have to do is you have to follow the proxy file edit what proxy does is it reduces the file size it reduces the uh, the information from your files and makes them lighter so even if you have an older system even if you are working on an older system you will not have a fight in delivering uh, projects very high end projects you will not have a fight in editing 4k footage because what that will do what that process will do is it will take your heavy footage the 4k footage convert it into compatible footage uh, shred all the information shred all the additional information make the files ultra light and then make it smooth edit uh in post and make it very easy for you to do it so proxy edit is something that you guys really 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 need to follow a uh, proxy edit workflow i'm going to share a sheet that i can't find the sheet right now i was supposed to share it here proxy edit workflow is you take your high quality footage you turn proxy flow uh, proxy edit in your uh, uh, so premier breed and gp you turn it on when you import footage the software asks you whether you want to convert the footage to compatible footage and to proxy files or not you say yes you convert the footage to compatible footage you convert the footage to compatible files what it does is it reduces the uh, additional things it reduces everything that it is uh, carrying the additional information makes the files lighter and allows you to edit or allows you to have a very smooth edit uh, in any kind of machine any kind of systems that you have and will give you a greater workflow as well uh no the uh, in the end you will have to reconnect the files this is only for edit guys what i'm telling you this is only for edit uh so coming back to outputs now when you're outputting your file when you're doing exports of your file you need to reconnect your original files this is where it will take time to render 
Now, why I kept this for the end is because when you're color grading, you will never ever color grade on proxy files. You will always color grade on your master files or your or your high quality files. You would never ever ever color grade on proxy files. So be careful with that when you're doing your exports. Use uh, uh, high quality reconnects and but. during your edit process by the time till the time you finalized your film don't uh, reconnect your original files your system will lose uh, uh, compatibility it will get slower and you will have a very very tough time editing these files any questions till now no awesome uh, yes ramesh tell me uh ramesh i'll just come back to that uh, as well so that's a very good question but i'm not selling my courses or anything here i'm teaching right now so let's come back to that could we edit 4k footage in an iphone yes you can use i movie it imports 4k footage because next i'm going to do is the most important thing how do you make money from your film how do you start making money from what you've shot so first thing you have to understand who where and how is your audience going to consume your content are you heading towards film festivals are you releasing it on youtube are you doing uh, uh a theater release are you doing private screenings what is that that you will do to reach your audience private screenings work if you are presenting your film before you send it to film festivals you want to show it to some professionals for example you want to show it to me so you can actually send a link with the password to me and i can go through it and i can give you feedback so private screenings help there film festivals help you to get recognition on a larger scale film festivals help you to to get a recognition on a larger platform and also to connect with other filmmakers that are there in the market who are doing similar kind of stuff you guys can actually collaborate after uh, in through these film festivals and the best place to collaborate is the film markets that are there in these film festivals and every festival has a market so guys try that out try those out they help you a lot YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo are public platforms. You can definitely upload your uh, films there, but you will need to promote them to get views. You will need to promote them to take it to people. And cinema release, on the other hand, is the most expensive, wherein you need at least three crore rupees to hit every multiplex in India across the metro cities. And I'm not even talking about tier three cities right now. This is only tier one, tier two. You need at least three crore rupees to be there. Hence, distribution is expensive. OTT release or अपना क्या कहते हैं Amazon Prime and Netflix release you have to be very careful why because they have restrictions <clears throat> they have uh, parameters what your films and uh, your web series or anything should be falling in you they should have been shot on a particular frame rate particular quality uh, everything should work around them or they should be such amazing topics that they would sell automatically uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime keep looking for that they pay you per view. they will not charge you too much to uh, produce it in the beginning but they will charge you or to put it up in the beginning but they will charge you to market it for you to appear on the first page and be recommended to all the viewers that netflix or amazon prime has to offer you have to pay them a marketing fee which is huge it starts about 5 lakhs goes to about 50 lakhs if you need them to put those posters that you see on the road so distribution you need to wear my tip is that even if you make a film for zero budget or for an x amount of budget keep some amount separately for distribution even if it uh, you are releasing it in whatsapp for all you care just keep some amount on the side to get views for festivals the best place to go is filmfreeway.com filmfreeway gives you the ability to uh, ott is uh, over the uh, what is it over the top platforms they are the they are amazon prime and uh, netflix are ott platforms all your uh, apps that uh, have uh, content are ott platforms over the top uh okay so what do you get on film festivals you get first you get exposure to filmmakers the judges who are there the people who are judging the films are established filmmakers you get exposure to them 
you get to attend a film market all the film festivals have film market where people like you and i can go and pitch to producers to pick up our stories if not the film itself you get to meet other filmmakers of your standard other filmmakers of your level or even more and you can actually approach them for collaborations these collaborations work very well i have actually collaborated with a lot of filmmakers in the past through these film festivals it is a showcase if you get published you can put those olive signs and say okay selection at so and so film festival the showcase works you can apply for grants through these film festivals let's say you win an award that award will make you eligible for grants and those grants are sometimes very very huge how can we make money through travel films okay how i made money through travel films i put up my first film i put it on social media i got recognition i made a film that was good in quality i started approaching magazines i started approaching travel agencies i started approaching online blogs that used travel content which in turn landed me to tourism boards which in turn landed me to business in travel films so travel films themselves might not pay but they are a pathway to you to get business in the same zone so that was my last slide guys if you have any questions just ask we've already shot 30 minutes over our time so any questions from anybody how to make storyline in pre wedding shoot uh, for a pre wedding you have to understand what your couple wants your couple would have already seen what they want they would have already seen what they like their friends are there they are looking at content on a daily basis the bride would be looking at so many videos and so many photos on a daily basis that they are your best people to guide you on how to get the story they want tell their story their story is a story you want to tell so for uh, wedding films it is their story is canon 200d good no it's not at all good uh, if you're shooting films uh, switch to lumix suppose i have a story concept should i write a script first and then pitch or no yeah you have to complete your package you have to have a final screenplay before you pitch to anybody because you won't get time between your pitch and screenplay to actually write it how did i started approaching different magazines i started messaging them on instagram i started messaging them on facebook i started sending them my malaysia video i sent started sending them my hong kong tourism video and that is what worked for me i had a portfolio i had a profile that got me business it is portfolio that works for you sir will you share the rigs and tripod links i will uh thanks anirudh thank you so much we always love appreciation uh should get uh, so one should what one should do to get recognized um, enter film festivals put your work online get likes get views it helps um make your videos visible to people who are important send them as email send them as uh, whatsapp messages or messages uh, get it published through other uh, influencers that helps you a lot uh ruchel the course will compare uh, will be uh, da vinci course will be about purely about editing but some bit of uh, color grading as a well, basic color grading not advanced how to earn with editing start approaching to filmmakers start approaching to bloggers who shoot start approaching to anybody who's got a camera they would need editors yeah every youtuber promotes their video they have a budget uh, i remember uh, i won't name the youtuber he spent 1 lakh rupees to get a million views but in turn those million views translated for about 10 lakh rupees of revenue because brands wanted to be with them minimum things you need uh, to shoot a travel film even if you have an iphone or android whatever you need a gimbal you need a phone gimbal for sure you need a a tripod or a, a compact tripod something like this to place your camera where a phone wherever it is needed you need a phone holder you, i don't not necessarily need a rig this would work this could work this get stuck on a very it's it's a friction pad it's an octopad it gets stuck in any kind of situation so